Hello everyone, welcome to the second day of the World Rapid Chess Championship, round number 6, Magnus Carlsen vs Benjamin Bock, the time control is 15 minutes for the entire game plus 10 seconds increment per move, and th the game has already started, I already see the moves on a different site, and uh, as usual, they're not updated here for one reason or another, I'll try to refresh the page, hopefully it will do something good. So, not yet. Okay, I'll input the moves manually. Uh, just, okay, suddenly we have a burst of five moves. So let's, let's look through the moves. But first, uh, after yesterday's mistake, I'll just uh, make sure that you can hear me. And yeah, okay, so everyone can hear me. That's great. So, uh, d4 on the board. Knight f6, Cousins plays the London system, Benjamin Bock plays d5. If I'm not wrong, this is the first time the two play against each other. I'll, I'll verify it on the database in a moment. Now, e3. So far, the main variation of the trendy London variation, uh, London opening uh, for white. And now c5. And here, there are two uh, critical lines. d takes c5 and knight f3. Carlsen chooses a sideline, which uh, is probably uh, as dangerous knight to c3 threatening knight b5 and theoretically speaking c takes d4 followed by a6 is the correct way to go so a6 is considered to be a slight uh, inaccuracy because of d takes c5 and then white is slightly better so i believe that in this position this is almost forced e takes d4 and now we can expect bok to play a6 and i just want to mention that uh yeah, it's already on the board. Let's just uh, put the moves uh, manually. So, a6, bishop d3, and now knight c6. We have on the board. And Carlsen is probably thinking. So, I'll just mention a, a small detail about the opening. So, here there is one very uh, rare sideline, even more than the one on the board. It's knight c3. This is called the Vereso variation, and now this weird looking move, bishop f4, uh, and uh, it's not too popular, but there are some players who use it as, a, as an almost main weapon, uh, and, the, and the, there are probably more than two, but uh, the two strong players I can come up with are uh, Badur Jobava and Tamir Nabati, Badur Jobava from Georgia and Tamir Nabati from Israel, and they both play this line every now and then even against uh, strong players. And I just want to mention that here, uh, this move, let's say the move a6 is sometimes played, and now if white plays e3, you get more or less the same variation, but now, in a way, you exchange the c-pawn for the e-pawn, which feels like it should favor white. So you get kind of an improved version, Carlsen got in the game, an improved version of this weird-looking line. Normally now black plays e6 and uh, develops normally and later on goes c5 without breaking the tension, which is considered to be a slight inaccuracy. The first one who breaks the tension in the center, who captures a pawn, usually gives up something. So, yeah, and now we have the move knight c to e2. This is something I'm not sure I understand. Let's try to come up with an explanation. So, well, I'll just mention that I... I'm aware that knight f3 is the critical line in this position. And uh, yeah, bishop d3 is not a move I'm familiar with. Probably aimed against bishop f5 and uh, wants to meet bishop g4 in a different way without allowing the exchange of the weak bishop for a knight. So let's see, knight c6 and now knight c e2. So probably follows the same idea. He wants to uh, avoid bishop g4. But why not knight g e2? I assume there is a knight before for black in this position. But what is why is this making such a big difference after knight before? It's hard for me to understand. And he didn't even play it, he played bishop g4. I really don't understand. Knight before looks really good for me, from my uh, view, in my view. Uh, I'm still a little bit sick, by the way, if uh, you didn't notice already. Knight b4. 
just exchange the knight for the bishop, later maybe bishop g4. Now bishop g4 allows white to avoid the exchange of the knight for the bishop, maybe c3. And then later on just uh, develop the pieces. And he did play c3, so I don't understand why not knight b4 and why knight c2 rather than knight g e2. But, uh, okay, now, in retrospect, I get what Kassen got from it, but just because uh, uh, Benjamin Bock did not uh, exploit it with knight b4. So now this this is the structure that white wants to have, and the knight on e2 is better than c3. And hopefully for white, later he wants to put this knight on e5 somehow, without allowing bishop takes f3. So we will probably wait a little bit with it. Okay, so... Let's just look at the chat real quick to see if anyone has any complaints. <coughs> Someone in the chat calls it a reverse Italian. I don't quite see the imagination. Well, maybe if you look from the side view and not just backwarded. Like, it's not as if white is playing the black side of the Italian. Instead of the pawns on e4 and e5 there, on, no, but it's completely different. You exchanged a c pawn for an e pawn. It's just a London system. You can call it the reverse Karokan, maybe. Pan of... Not even reverse, just the normal pan of variation. So, actually, uh, allow me to just mention what I just realized. So, there is a variation in the Karokan called the pan of... Uh, attack, I believe, and now usually white goes bishop d3, and then let's say for example knight c6. I, I'm not familiar with the main theory, but you get a very similar position. And let's just say for example bishop g4. So imagine in this variation, white is usually struggling to get an advantage in a very solid position. Usually it's only a little bit better, but not enough to to be too happy about it. And here it's as if black played this weird looking a6 move, white played the imaginary move knight c3, black played bishop g4 and then knight c e2 and we have the same position from the game. Which looks like an improved version of this pano variation. So Kassen with his rare choice of opening somehow got an improved variation of two rarest, I would almost said rarier, two more rare opening choices that are not, uh, let's call it, they're not too harmful, but they're not without Venom as, as well. So, getting an improved version of another opening is almost always a good uh, sign for your chances. So, let's see what we have in the game. So, after the move c3, we have e6. Once again, this site does not update on time, but uh, I can hardly complain. E6, Queen D2. Fortunately, I have access to other sites. Not the official one, just stating in case anyone wants to sue me in the future. <coughs> Although I don't think it's illegal to copy manually moves from the uh, from the official site, but just to be safe, I will not do it. And uh, yeah, Queen D2 on the board. So as I mentioned, he's waiting a little bit. It's not so clear uh, for black uh, what he wants to do with this bishop for now. And it's not so clear also how white will get his knight to e5. I'm curious to see how this game will turn out. <coughs> how it will develop. <coughs> so, and if I'll ever be healthy. It's been like almost two weeks that I feel the same way since the Israeli chess championship. One guy was sick at the first round and by the end of the tournament... <laughs> Like 60-70% of the tournament had the same thing and none of them are healthy by now. I, I talked to different players from the tournament, they're still sick. Still under the weather, with a running nose. Bloody winter. So, let's see. Hmm. Still thinking. Let's make sure to uh, check out if any of these amazing players, especially Carlsen, played against each other in the past. 
So opening up my database. Mm. So Magnus Carlsen versus Benjamin Bock making a search. And I hope I'm not the only one curious to know if it's their first encounter. Well, I know Benjamin personally for many years now, so I kind of feel excited for him to have play to to finally play against Carlsen. So just wanna make sure if he didn't get the chance. And no, they never played before according to my database. So it's their first ever encounter and unfortunately for Benjamin he is black against the world champion. But he's a very, very solid player. Although I can say that uh, he he feels the da not the danger but the stress because normally he plays quite fast in the opening and he's already burned almost 7 minutes. So it feels like uh, he's not uh, as confident as he would be against any other player of uh, his own caliber. So, which is a very high uh, level in itself. He's above 2600 Fide. So, Bishop h5 on the board. Probably I should mention that the Netherlands has, where uh, Benjamin is from, has a lot of young talents that are, uh, let's call it, uh, attacking the chess world. Uh, for I, I can't come up with a better word. Taking over the chess world. Of course, there is Anish Giri in the top 5 for for a long time now. Probably now his rating is a bit lower, but there is no doubt he's one of the best players in the world and one of the biggest talents ever uh, seen, at least by me. Uh, and uh, Other than Anish Giri, who's, who's an incredible chess player, uh, they have uh, Benjamin Bock, they have Robin Van Kampen, they have Jordan Van Forest, I probably mispronounced it, and uh, I'm sure there are a few others that I forgot. And I, I'm not mentioning all the professional players from Netherlands, just the young ones, which are around 20 years old or, or less. So all these three players I mentioned are above 2600 and very young and uh, probably going to keep improving in the coming years. Bishop h5 on the board. And now Carlsen made another useful move without developing the knight, bishop g5. And bishop g6 was played. And now another interesting move, knight f4. And uh, his idea is obviously to take back with the knight. Because in this structure, this is called the Carlsbad structure. But it's the reversed Carlsbad. So once again, I'll demonstrate the, the structure from the normal point of view. So this is the starting position. This opening, the Queen's Gambit declined. One of the main uh, lines uh, on the most uh, topical variations in chess in general and in history, the history of chess. Now this move C takes D5 is considered to be one of the critical uh, choices for white, if not the most ambitious. And this structure of exchange of C versus E pawn is the Carlsbad variation. And just to mention that if you get something like this structure, which is very similar to the game we have, so normally black takes, but I'll just mention that in, in here, whatever, ignore the pieces for now, I just want to, to say that this knight, or whichever knight that, I, that black has, <laughs> I actually confused for a moment, uh, I'll just make a ra some random uh, opening moves, okay, just ignore what I'm doing. So, yeah, so this knight or that knight, their ideal square on the, in this structure is on d6. I will not explain all the details now, but just believe me that on d6 this knight is very strong. It can, it can access the c4 square after there is b4, it uh, aims at e4, it helps pro stopping the b5 uh, minority attack with b4, b5. This is the ideal square for the knight. And Im imagine the same structure with colors reversed. So here this knight will be ideally placed on d3. So it will make more sense to play knight f4, knight takes d3, than to go knight f3 and here waste two more moves, moving the queen away and moving the knight back to d3 later on. So this is a very, very logical uh, positional decision from Carlsen and uh, Benjamin is 
probably not thinking now because I see some moves. Knight f4 on the board. Um, <coughs> so, yes, just a moment. <coughs> I'm trying to understand how they got it. Yeah, so he also had to consider whether or not Carlsen is threatening knight takes g6, which I'm not sure about. Uh, but uh, he made the, the almost obvious choice to not give Carlsen the choice whether to grab the pair of bishops or not. Usually black wants to exchange this, this light squared bishop from white to get him to minimize the chances for an attack on the king's side in the future. And now knight takes, bishop d6 uh, was played. Uh, usually bishop e7 is more solid, but okay, bishop d6, knight to f3 on the board. And we have a solid uh, structure of the reversed cast but variation. But Im imagining that white has the black side of the cast but this is a dream scenario because his opponent did not even finish his development and he already has this knight on the ideal square. He already exchanged these light squared bishops, which is normally good uh, against uh, the cast, but for the black side, which is the white side in this case, <coughs> he's gonna probably put the knight on e5 later. But still, it's a very, very solid position for both sides. So even though he achieved a few things, it's only minor improvements and it sh still should be around equal. Unlike my health, which should be around minus 0.5. Slightly worse. For black. No, in black's favor. Okay. Enough with the metaphors. 94 was played. <coughs> so, resorting into some tactics to simplify the position. White doesn't want to move the queen and allow knight takes g5, so he takes, knight takes, and now <coughs> king takes d2. <laughs> so this end game, rook takes d8. Feels like black shouldn't have too many problems. Feels rather equal, but uh, we will see what how it will turn out, because Carson has more than double the time, I think. Actually, not more, but <laughs> almost double the time. Uh, of Benjamin's so yeah he's definitely gonna try to put pressure somehow but it feels like uh, there is no positional justification for white to have an advantage rook hg1 and was played oh, I don't feel well <laughs> can barely breathe so what do we have now? Castles on the board. <coughs> and now, after the move castles, what do we have? Carson is thinking. Carson is thinking. Okay, A4 was played, aimed against a future B5, B4, which is a reversed minority attack. I think I'll explain for a moment what minority attack is. But uh, just for, to make it look more logical, I will flip the board. So just in case, let's just assume that white wastes moves. Goes rookie 2 and back. So minority attack is when this... You see, I have only two pawns versus this chain of four pawns. So it's called a minority, and, and these four are, are the majority of pawns. And I want to push b4, normally speaking, in this position. If I push b4, it will be in my favor. Why? Because... Uh, Let's just keep doing it, like this. So, at some point I'll get b4 in. If you ever capture, this pawn on d4 will be weak. And if you don't, 
I will capture. And once again, if you capture with a pawn, this c3 pawn will be weak, this a pawn will be a little bit weaker. I'll have the b file. And if you capture with a piece, the king or a rook or whatever, this pawn once again will be weak. So, normally white plays, uh, usually it's the reverse colors, but let's say that here white plays a3 to prevent uh, the idea of b4, then I go a5, aiming for b4 nevertheless. And the typical idea, if he allows b4, he will be slightly worse. So normally the white side, which is uh, in the regular positions, the black side with the reversed colors, uh, the same structure, plays this, and then uh, let's say uh, plants a knight on, on the c5 square to blockade the c file. And if you take, he takes with the a pawn, and this is a very complicated middle game position. Normally they put the pawn on a4, and then start maneuvering the knight to c4, and maybe slightly, slowly pr pushing e5, but generally speaking, it should be uh, here black who's pushing in this structure, but uh, without uh, too much problems for white, because he has the knight on the ideal square, d3, which, where he can access c5 very easily. And uh, one of the key ideas in this position that I'll, I'll just mention, is the what Carlsen just did, is that... Uh, I just want to keep up with the game for a moment, so a4, so he avoids b5 altogether, because now if you ever play b5, I'll just take and have the a file uh, open for my own uh, pleasure, and I still have this idea of playing b4 and putting a knight on c5, and uh, ins installing a knight on c5 like this, with a, with a very active position for white. So a4 puts an end to almost all future uh, b5 ideas and now black played rook c8 putting a rook on the open file a5 was played uh, which is a logical ver I mean it's 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 quite reasonable to uh, fix the pawns if you ever go b6 or b5 I'll just take and a6 will be weak he probably wants to get b4 in at some point later on and now rook f8 was played, which is useful. And uh, knight f e5. So Carson tries to slowly push, but it's not so clear to me what he will achieve because, well, now he wants f4 maybe, but I think that like black should not be afraid of exchanging pieces because uh, it will bring him closer to the draw or let's say to equality. And uh, I'm not sure who to take back with to take uh, the knight with, but let's just say, for example, knight takes. If you take with the knight, I'll exchange, and the rook ending should be a quite a relatively easy draw, I think. So you, I would, I would expect Carlson to take with the pawn, but yeah, this position is is quite harmless for Black. So yeah, he'd probably take with the knight nevertheless, and and try to press in this position, push f4, f5 slowly, and. Uh, Maybe bring the king over from here. I don't know. We'll see what he does. So, bishop e5 was played. But, uh, well, I'm a little bit less less content with bishop e5. Because now if white takes with the pawn, I would rather have the bishop uh, uh, than this knight. But Carson didn't care. He took with the knight nevertheless. So this is the position on the board. We can expect Benjamin to take with the knight. But... Uh, We'll see. It's not forced. Thirsty. <coughs> I lose so much liquids from my body through my nose in the past few days. I have to drink any, every minute. I need to... Find a way to to get healthier as quickly as possible. So I asked a bunch of my friends, by the way, who are uh, also strong chess players, uh, who happen to follow this event uh, regularly, just uh, just in, for fun and for their improvement, to uh, let me know if they see any incredibly interesting games 
so that once this game will be finished, I'll move to the more interesting games rather than uh, shooting in the dark. Okay, knight takes e5 was played, rook takes e5. I can't breathe anymore. If I choke at some point, <clears throat> then uh, maybe I should tell the viewers my address so you can call an ambulance or something. Ambulance. But uh, just beware because uh, you'll have to pay for it eventually. I think this is how it works. This would be a nice way of supporting my channel. Ordering an ambulance if I have a problem and, and, and like... Uh, uh, reimbursing it for me after all these years <laughs> oh that's brilliant okay f6 after knight takes yes so rook e3 king f7 feels rather drawish to me but Carlsen will definitely try to push he plays rook a4 <clears throat> well, Benjamin Bock has very a very powerful uh, opening repertoire, uh, in my opinion. I have seen some of his games. Uh, I've been following uh, many of my friends' games uh, in recent tournaments, and he never seems to be in trouble in the opening, especially with black. And he plays all the most trendy lines, like Grunfeld and Berlin and different variations yeah that that are also trendy and uh, as you can see here he was also very well prepared so i can see why carlsen didn't want to go into some theoretical battles uh and he wanted to just get a game but uh, for some reason even this wasn't achieved and i uh slightly blame this move bishop d3 in the opening i'll just go back real quick i think the critical move in this particular opening variation was here Instead of bishop d3, let's get back to the white uh, angle of the board. So after a6, I think this move knight f3 is far more critical. And uh, the point being that after knight c6, for example, this bishop is black's biggest uh, problem. So he wants to exchange it or put it on f5 where it's more active. So just putting the knight on e5 and avoiding bishop g4 and aiming to play g4 after bishop f5 is much more uh, challenging for black. And uh, yeah, usually the players of the black side uh, want to exchange this bishop straight away, but now h3 followed by queen f3 and g4, g5 gives white much more chances with long castle, uh, much more chances for an advantage. So I think Carlsen wasn't very well prepared for this opening for one reason or another. And uh, this is why he achieved so little of an advantage. But Benjamin is still thinking or is he? No, he played rook c4. Which I think is interesting, but uh, he wouldn't have played it against every opponent. I think it's part of the psychological effect of playing against Carlsen. But uh, I'm curious. I think Carlsen will capture and after d takes c4, uh, he will try to push somehow. But how exactly, I can't say. Is it even like equal? It looks equal to me. Well, according to Chess24 here, he has a minute and 20 seconds, which is very, very little. Uh, by any means, doesn't matter what's the position, so... Well, he has a 10 second increment, but uh, it's not uh, that much if you would were to consider the fact that uh, the Rook End games, while being relatively drawish, uh, they have a, a big, a large drawing tendency. They're still very complicated and you have to be precise and play actively. So, yeah, I don't know. It's always a difficult question whether you should uh, resort into passive defense or just uh, exchange pieces like this and try to play actively. Now I think a, a very interesting move will be to strike the iron while it's hot and go b3, trying to get this pawn. Rook c8 now is a little bit... And he played it! Okay, great. So c takes b3, c4 is the point. And then to get rook takes b3 and put pressure on b7. 
Okay, now if rook c8, then maybe c5, and then rook takes b3 next. So, and we have this on the board. Okay, so b3, and uh, Benjamin is thinking, I think, like, uh, it was very, very drawish at some point earlier, and now it starts feeling uh, under a little bit of pressure. It might still be equal, but I don't, I don't like what Black did here. And... Uh, Allowing this, uh, this let's call it improvement of White's position in the name of simplification, and he plays Rook C8. Yeah, oh my God, I don't like it. I don't like it. Carson is pulling some magic. B takes C4, Rook takes C4, Rook E1, Rook B1, Rook B7 is the idea. Let's see, you go back. I go Rook B1. I go king d3, c4. There are, suddenly white has prospects. So this is the position on the board. Carson plays rook e1 immediately. Doesn't even care about b takes c4, which makes sense. Doesn't want to waste time. Just rook b1 and rook takes b3. So the game might proceed like this. And now black is quite passive. He doesn't have any way to hold the position uh, while playing actively. So he will probably just move the king to the center. And this position... Can also go rook b6 check to move back so this position is uh, definitely worse i'm not sure if white has a winning plan but i wouldn't be happy to play black here compared to the previous position so back to the position in the game i have some updates after rook c8 he he played rook e1 black played c takes b3 rook b1 i assume rook no he didn't play rook c7 he played rook c4 what what's the point if I go rook takes b3, you want rook a4? And then... But you lose the e6 pawn, sorry. If rook takes b7, king moves, I have this fork. And after rook takes a5, rook e6, white should be winning. Oh my god. Carson does it again. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Suddenly it looks terrible for black. Out of nothing. The rook was... Like, okay, let, let's go back. I, I have to go back a little bit before they make the next move. So, and uh, play on the time pressure. So, Black also is in is in suddenly in trouble and with severe time pressure. So, more or less around here, this looks okay. But not Rook C4. I think Black shouldn't be afraid of playing passively. After Rook A4, leaving his Rook on C7, bringing the King over to D7, and just sit and wait with without uh, being afraid. It's, it's probably slightly worse, but nothing special. Maybe even instead of allowing all of this to just play f6 here. Not being afraid of knight f3. And if white takes, I will take with the b pawn and have the b file for my rook. Anyway, back to the game. So, something changed. Rook c4, b3, cb3. c4 is on the board, so I don't know why, but I see a different position on the other side. I, I mentioned that something else was played. Oh, sorry about uh, the board. You probably didn't see the board. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. I apologize for it. I did notice. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Let's see. Where can I find... Okay, regarding what I said about the ambulance earlier, uh, I'm not sure what the rules are, but if someone needs an ambulance and he calls for it in Israel, and he ends up being healthy without uh, his life being saved or whatever, he has to pay, according to what I heard, 850 shekels, which is equivalent to like uh, 200 euros, more or less. So... I'm not sure if this is entirely correct or not, but uh, I heard uh, once about it. You might have to pay it also if you're if you're actually in danger and, and they save your life, but I'm not sure about the rules here. I hope I will not know it for a very long time. <laughs> not for me and not for anyone that I know or meet in the future. But the fact that I'm streaming 
is nice because some of the people watching know my address and they can call whoever is needed if there is any problem. I don't even need to do anything other than watch chess. I don't have to worry about calling anyone. So, <clears throat> okay, now it updates again. Something is wrong with the side. They show this position as the, as the game and now they got back to what I showed earlier. Rook c4. So let's move on with the game. Rook takes b3. Rook a4, rook b7, rook b6. I don't understand why Benjamin would allow such a thing. Okay, maybe he thought that he has this rook a2 followed by rook c2. But Kasten just sacrifices the f2 pawn. And these two pawns on the king side are already quite advanced. Both of them on the fourth rank. And they are gonna move forward very, very quickly. I think this is completely lost. And the king is also cut off on g6. The rook will be on the e-file, as you can see in this large update. Rook g2, c5, king f5, rook e1, rook b2, c6. There's no chance. d5 will follow, king will come, and there's no chance for black to push his pawns forward. A very terrible misplay of the endgame by uh, my friend Benjamin Bock, and he already resigned after c6. Wow. Kassen is so confident in his skills and it works i wish i could play like this against everyone like when i play low rated players let's say the difference between them is like in rapid is 300 points although in classical chess is closer to 200 uh so 300 points if i play someone who was 2200 which is around 300 points below my rating and i allow this end game that's show on the board and I allow this endgame I would be afraid that I will not win I will be feeling as if I something went terribly wrong in my play and Carlsen doesn't care he just you know just moving the pieces he knows he's gonna win and his opponent is gonna go wrong and somehow it happens that's just incredible he just pulls magic in the endgame every single game and usually it's his opponents that do it rather than him but he's the one that provokes it if it happens once you can call it luck you can call it uh, whatever you want you can call it skill but if it happens many many times it's definitely skill because he provokes mistakes he doesn't uh, happen to have all his opponents mistaking in equal positions in random places he puts pressure his opponents break and this is wonderful to witness. I feel like I learned a lot from this game about confidence and about uh, not uh, giving up my winning chances. Even the slightest of advantages, even psychological ones, are enough to have every any decent opponent breaking uh, in a certain uh, occasion. So never give up on your uh, chances to win. And don't agree to a draw even if it looks drawish. Okay, so moving on, let's look at a different game. So I'll try to see if any other games are being watched. Mm. So <coughs> Aronian versus Korobov on the top board. Let's go to this game. Carlsen wasn't playing on the top board. Okay, so this is the current position. And it has even more views than Carlsen's game right now. So, so what can I say? I need, I opened the wrong board. Okay, now it should work. Great. So, B4 on the board, same position in both sides. This is good. So, I have no idea how to evaluate it, but it looks like white is the one pushing, obviously. He's a pawn up. It's opposite colored bishops, uh, but, well, is it a draw? I cannot say. Let's think. Bishop f3, aiming to stop this pawn from getting to b7 quickly. Black will probably follow with king g2, king f1 and king f2, trying to get this pawn. So b5 on the board, king g2. I don't understand something. Why didn't he start with king g2? 
Why would you spend the move? It's probably transposing to each other. But uh, b5. Okay, this looks logical, fairly reasonable. b6. King f1 is what I would expect now. Bishop moves somewhere. Let's say c3. King f2. And now bishop e5 is probably the key idea to indirectly defend this pawn. Because after king g3 there's f5 check. And then the second passer on the f-file will be deciding the game. So I'm not sure how black is going to defend. b6, h5. Okay, I'm not sure what he wants to achieve with this move, but we'll see soon enough. Korobov is the leader of the tournament, by the way, with 5 out of 5. 100% score. And Aronian is the only one half a point behind him. All the rest of them have 4 and, so and less. So if Aronian wins, he will definitely lead the tournament. For sure. <laughs> with 5.5 out of 6. Okay, h5, king c5 on the board, king f1, bishop c3, king f2. King g2. And now... King g2, bishop e5. As you can see here already. Bishop e5, king h3, king d6. And now white will simply follow with king c7 and b7. I don't think there is anything that black can do. King g4 on the board, yes. I don't see an idea for black even. <laughs> ah, he wants to exchange all the pawns. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, he wants to go g5 and then h4. So, why doesn't go for the b6 pawn? Because king c7, g5 might be a draw. He wants go he goes king e6. Hmm. And now if g5, he has f5. And uh, black has nothing to do. So, and the next move is king f6. Okay, so black should probably wait. Sit and wait. Let's say bishop g2, king f6, bishop e4. King g7, for example, or some bishop move. And it's going to be Zugzwang. This position is a Zugzwang. The king has to move. I have king g5 next. Once again, you have to move back. At some point, you have to move back. I'm not sure what's the winning plan, but it exists. It exists in this position. So, in the game, 54, king e6, bishop e4, bishop d6 was played. So, black has to move his king. Well, if white could put his bishop on h4, it would be much easier. So I'm guessing this is the plan, but how to achieve it? <coughs> I'm thinking to just have the Zugzwang I mentioned earlier to put the king on h4. But I can't get the bishop there. Okay, let's wait and see if Aronian finds the right plan. Oh, sorry, once again, with the 8th rank. I need to stop scrolling, but it's it's difficult because... Uh, okay, I'll use just this one from now on. Thanks. It's just a bad habit. Thanks for mentioning in the chat, guys, and uh, fixed it. The position is winning nevertheless, and the 8th rank is empty, so you can imagine the rest, at least in this game. Wow, well, Borisek won against Nidich. Okay, we'll check it out after this game. King e7 on the board. <coughs> what is the winning plan? If, if anything, if it even exists... There should be a winning plan. Why is the bishop on f5? I gave a check. Okay. So now he'll probably go back to e4. King d8. Ah, so g5. g5 will probably be played. And then how do you win? How do you win? 
Uh, ignore it. Uh -huh. Doesn't make sense. Okay, if g5, how do I win with white? F takes, king takes, and bishop e7 check. That's it. <laughs> Put the bishop on h4 and resign. Okay, and he didn't even wait to see it on the board. He just resigned. Okay, before I move on to Borisek's game, let's look what happened in this game prior to this endgame. So Aronian is white. He likes to play c4. <coughs> Probably the world's leading expert in 1c4. Now we play this sideline of b3. And queen c1, rook d1. Interesting. <coughs> and Okay, so far, unbalanced middle game. f4. Queen e3, a lot of interesting decisions. Knight b1, wow, getting the knight to c4. Aronian is a very, very creative player. There is no doubt in anyone's mind. <coughs> okay, he's a pawn down, but he has great compensation. And now he just got the material back. And he has an opposite colored bishop ending with a pawn up. In this particular case, it's two pawns. And now black got the h2 pawn, but it's not enough for a we for a draw. As we just saw, this b6 pawn was too much. Maybe there were chances to equal to equalize or to defend. Well, you can't say defend because this is already either a draw or a win. The chances for a draw, but he didn't find them, and now he just resigned. Okay, let's move on to the next game. But before I move to Borisek's game. Uh, I will look if there is anything else that many people are watching right now. So, no games in progress. Vashie beat Tomaszewski. Ivanchuk beat Driev. Let me show the results from here. Um, from down here. Okay, you guys can see it over here. So, Vidit lost to Grishuk. <coughs> Ivanchuk, uh, I see on the other screen, Ivanchuk beat Driv, Karyakin beat Fresine. So many games that might be interesting, but I need to choose one. I don't want to just randomly go in and risk it might be less than, less than uh, intriguing. So, uh, anything else? Some games that are still in progress. Hmm... Anand beat Atabaev. Boris Teknaidic is not being watched by many people. For one reason or another. So, okay, let's go to the most popular game that's still in progress. Uh, it was Wei E with Black against Amonatov. Farouk Amonatov. So I'm searching for it here. It's still in progress. So let's have a look. Okay. <coughs> this is the position. We'll move on to the games that are finished uh, between the rounds. Uh, after I receive a recommendation from anyone of my friends. So. Let's see. <coughs> okay, I have. I'm not sure if which board is more updated. Move 64, move 58. Oh man. Okay, I'll just update manually as usual. Move 65 already. Okay, after rook c7. So. After rook c7. White played 59, bishop a2. Uh, where is it? 59 bishop a2, king b5. Okay, now we can see it. King b5, rook f8, rook g7, rook b8 check, knight b7, rook, D, rook to e8, rook g5, rook c8, rook g6, bishop f7, rook g1 check, king d2. And now, well, I can't really understand what's going on. It's too crazy for me without concentrating on the position. So I'll try for a moment to think and breathe. 
of, of fully. Yes. Still King D2. Who's better even? Cannot say. White wants to take on C6. And also go Bishop E8. Looks very dangerous for black. <coughs> black has this A pawn. And that might compensate for it. But it feels like white is the one pressing. Okay, after king d2, rook d4 check was played, king e3, knight a5, rook e8, okay, it's hard to understand this position, and now another bunch of moves, king b4, rook d3, rook takes d3, king takes d3, rook d1 check, and uh, King e2, rook d7, they are in severe time pressure, the moves are coming up very quickly. Wow, what a lovely position to play. I think I'll choose black now. This king, the black king does not seem to be in danger anymore, the a pawn is incredibly dangerous. Bishop e6, maybe just a3, ignoring this uh, bishop takes d7 idea, because then a2 and I promote. Hmm. He did not play a3. Hmm. Okay, rook d6 on the board. No. No moves for the moment. Severe time pressure. Okay, bishop a2 was played, knight c4. And now, what can we see? Um, rook d2 check is a big threat, so he exchanges goes rook a8 probably but now white is thinking i'm expecting rook a8 is it winning for black probably not because after rook a8 king before i can give a check then go back i don't know anyway he did not play rook e8 rook a8 he played rook takes e5 i don't like it i think it's a mistake because this pawn is much more important than taking a pawn here now c5 was played, rook d5. And if black got, does rook a6, you have to go here. You go a3. There is no chance that white is in time. Okay, let's say you go rook a1. Now I have queen d5 simply. a4. king e4. e6. <coughs> no, I, this is not the right way. Okay, here I should probably play king c3, attack this c2 pawn. This should be winning for black, but let's go back to the position in the game. Rook a6, white played rook d1, a3, and rook a1. So probably he forces a2, because if king c3, rook a2, everything is protected. For white, and it's not so easy to make progress, so you have to go a2. I think a3 was a mistake because it wastes some time. Now I have time to push the pawns e5 and f4. Maybe instead of a3, you could have gone king c3. The idea after rook a1, I have king b2 with tempo. And if you don't do it, I take on c2 and then go. Whenever you go rook a1, I'll go king b2. So. King c3 was definitely a more challenging move, but maybe it's still winning a2, e5. Yeah, but it feels wrong because now if king c3, f4, king b2, I'll sacrifice and go e6 or f5. Black might not win. He might even lose against these two pawns. It's not easy for a rook to stop two connected pawns. So king b4 was played. King... Wait a2, oh sorry, I'm wrong, a2, why didn't play e5, played king d2, king b4, e5, king e3, king c3, rook a4, it doesn't look like black is winning, which is very surprising that such a strong player as Wei Yi 
play this move a4 to a3. Well, maybe it's in severe time pressure. And it's always easier to, to judge when you look from outside the game rather than playing in time pressure. Because I have time to think and, and wonder about variations rather than just move. Plus, I'm not nervous. Just unhealthy. Come on. At some point, the country will run out of, of clinics or whatever you want to call it. And then I'll just be left with a running nose. More moves. E6, rook A6, E7. No, not E7. King C4. Not... Okay. Wait. What? Yes, they played E7. Rook E6, King C4. <clears throat> okay, so... There's not... I don't understand. Why would... What? Rook E7, King C5 probably. King B2. Played King, King B2 instantly. And if rook a2, how to evaluate this? Probably rook a2 is not forced. I can go the rook like here and then take on a1. But he did take on a2. Now he took on c5. Wow, that's interesting suddenly. It's not so clear to me. Is it winning or not? Rook takes e7 is probably going to follow soon. And which pawn should I push? Probably the C pawn. Is it losing or not? I have King D6 with tempo, fortunately. Without it, it would be much more difficult. Okay, in the game, he did not play this move. King takes C5. King B2 was played. And now C4 would have been interesting, but... Played f4, king, rook takes, king d5, which makes sense. He wants to just push f5, f6. And this king is far away. I think that black is, uh, white is in time to make a draw. Okay, so king d5, rook f7, king e5. King c3 was played. He tries to get to the pawn faster. f5, probably king c4, rook f8. King e6, king d4, f6. It doesn't look like black is in time. It's probably a draw. So, uh, after king c3, yeah, where is the right position? This, here, after king c3, f5, rook a7 was played. F6, King C4, King E6, Rook A6 check. They probably will agree to a draw. King E7, just a draw. <coughs> King D5. I mean, it will stop the pawn probably, but I can always promote to a knight. And here I can go to F6 actually. I don't even have to go to e8 and promote to a knight after king e6 so in the game rook e7 king e6 okay so they agree to a draw but what were the moves king rook a6 king e7 and here black played king c3 f7 rook a7 king e6 takes 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 and agreed to a draw okay overall quite a decent game um, so they made a draw I'm curious how this game arose to this position but it's quite crazy if anyone in the chat has any suggestions to look at another game, I will move to the to to it afterwards. <laughs> My nose is sometimes clean, uh, Mister Azem Zidnilovic. 
Sometimes it's clean, but probably half of the time. So, what can I do now? Here, uh, I don't want to analyze this complex middle game that we just witnessed. The uh, end game, actually. We started from the end game, but let's have a look at how they uh, reached this position from the start. So, Amonato was white. They have a main line of the Taimanov variation. Bishop b4 is not the most trendy line. Knight e7. This is considered to be a sideline, but an interesting one nevertheless. Way e is quite well prepared. And uh, Amonatov doesn't want the draw, he goes for the endgame, which is relatively equal. And now, well, this is slightly more pleasant for white, I think. White is pushing. No, he could have. No, he couldn't. He couldn't take the pawn. So way he managed to defend all these pawns by tactics and. Amonatov, for some reason, put his rook on g3, which is a little bit stuck. Now he compromised a little bit in order to free the rook. We got these two pawns. And this is more or less the position we started look, looking at over here. Which is terribly uh, complex and difficult to evaluate, but... Well, it seems now in retrospect that black was the one pushing, but yeah, this end game, I'm sure black had a win somewhere along the way. It feels like, I think rook e5 was a mistake. I feel like you should play rook e8 and go for activity straight away, like f4 and e5 and just, okay, if takes, then maybe king f3 and start to push e5 as quickly as possible. King f4, try to get the rook for, for the pawn, to exchange them. Maybe it's lost, but this looks like the best uh, defense. Rook e5 feels a bit greedy, in my opinion, to grab a pawn. And now uh, allowing black to have to get everything he wants, c5 and rook a6. And now this move, king c3, which probably was better than the game continuation, just king b2 after rook a1. If not, I go king takes c2. Um... Uh, yeah, there is no chance that black will be, that white will be in time because I can take this pawn. Yeah, and now I also have this pawn running. This is winning for sure. It's just a matter of details. So, a3, rook a1, a2, and now black lost two very important tempi, and uh, white exploited it very, very skillfully. And uh, defended quite well. F4 is a nice move. And please notice that White only uh, managed to draw by one tempo. So he lost two tempi with it, this A3, A2. Probably even more because uh, he had to bring the king all the way to B4, to A3, to B2 later. So yeah, I feel like this was a very... A very un... Uh, a typical mistake, yeah, to a player of way is caliber. Mm. Yeah. So let's move to a different game. Let's see which game is the most viewed right now. <coughs> <coughs> the blitz championship in four days i'll be able to breathe again okay so there's another game in progress mamedo versus malachov so where is it this one okay some people are watching mamedov is white rauf mamedo from azerbaijan and uh, vladimir malachov from russia Two incredibly strong players, and uh, Black is a pawn up, and he's 
pushing for a win. Let's see if he will manage to achieve what he's looking for. So in the actual game, it's not move 109, it's already move 119. Uh, I have a feeling we'll have the chunk of update very soon. And we have rook a8. Rook b2 check, king g1 was played. Black keeps trying. King g1. g5 on the board I'm so hollow baby <coughs> HGFG is it a draw or is it a win probably a draw hmm it, he's still thinking how much time does he have okay both have are very low on time. Rook a6 was played, threatening knight f4 check and grabbing this pawn h5. So we can expect black to play h4 himself. But then there are several options. One of them being knight takes g5 check, followed by, for example, rook a5 and g takes h4. Or g takes h4 straight away, but probably rook a5 is better. Uh, grabbing the pawn and uh, cutting the king off and uh, hoping uh, to get the white king back to the center uh, by the time black captures this pawn so but maybe he doesn't even have to give up the piece maybe he can just avoid something bad happening so knight f4 check maybe yeah it looks good and then if the king moves, I can give probably another check from here. And then g8, I'm not sure, 96 check. Well, some precision is required, but uh, I think not too much. Anyway, I would just play knight g5 and make a draw to be safe. But in the game, he played knight f6, and now white played knight f4, which looks... Like a really nice move, knight f4, gf just rook f6, rook f4 is a draw immediately, so king g7, now just rook a7, king g8, so black king is cut off, so there sh shouldn't be any winning chances, another two checks took place, rook a7, king g8, now Anything should make sense. Probably knight e6, attacking this pawn. He's thinking. <coughs> Excuse me. For not being able to breathe. Knight e6, g4. No, g4 was played. And now, knight g7 check, king f8, knight e6, king g8 will probably be played, but it shouldn't be scary for white. King g8, I can just go rook g7, rook g6, rook h6 check next. So he went back, this is the position on the, sorry, this is the position on the board, we can expect white to repeat with knight g7. I think a draw will be agreed soon enough. Knight g7, king d8. And now... Rook a5 was played. Just knight h5 next. Cannot be prevented. And there's nothing more that black can do to press in this position. <coughs> so... This probably concludes all the games of the first round, once this one is finished. Yeah, this is the last game. 
<coughs> and uh... yeah Vashie bit Tomaszewski We'll look at it by the time the next round starts So they agree to a draw After rook a5, black just repeated moves so Rook b1, rook b2 So a draw was agreed We can leave this game for now Let's go to Vashie versus Tomaszewski So over here Vashie with white Against Evgeny Tomaszewski MVL played e4 one of the main lines the most trendy line in the Karoka nowadays I'm not sure what's the name and I'm not sure what's Queen c7 I haven't seen it before and now this move g5 yeah I've seen some game where black tried to play g5 I think it was Nakamura versus Shankland in the US champ championship <coughs> where Nakamura won actually but in that game he tr he was fighting for a draw with white and, uh, or just repeated the moves I don't remember either way <coughs> g5 is the key idea but she has probably was prepared it didn't take too long to play these moves No. Knight g3, wow! A very nice idea, sacrificing a piece for a tempo, but it's curious. If you just go knight d2, will it just transpose? <laughs> is it only pretty or is it also strong? Anyway, knight d2, knight d4, e he takes. So far, it looks really nice for white. And this, oh, this is a move missed by. Tomaszewski when playing f6 a very simple tactic for both of their standards yeah both are world elite players but yeah just winning a pawn simply and now just playing a pawn up okay black took the pawn back but he's gonna lose some material sooner or later he's under heavy pressure his pawns are coming much faster on the on the king side e7 is already coming knight h5 threatening some checks and here he already chose to resign yeah there is nothing to do if king h6 queen f8 mate let's just show it if one and if uh, king g7 probably queen e7 followed by knight g8 knight takes g4 something like this knight f6 check just it looks lost but let's try to be precise i think queen e7 is the reason and now ah now queen e8 of course <laughs> just showed it a second ago yeah okay so just resigned mate is followed uh, not such a great game uh from Evgeny tomaszewski's uh, perspective but uh, he's a great player nevertheless there's no doubt she found some really nice ideas in this game so let's see if you don't mind um, I think I'll take a very short break to restore my breathing but uh, let's just I'll leave the final position of this <laughs> not the final <coughs> let's show some critical position you know what while I'm taking the break, I will press the keyboard, so it's not a real break. I'll just turn off the camera for a moment, like this, and now I will just show the moves from this game and uh, be quiet in the meantime.
And what a lovely break that was. Did it feel like an automated uh, program that just presses the moves? Because it was me. It was me. I was just not looking at the game myself for some reason. I had to deal with another thing called the social media. It wasn't a real break. It was all fictional. I also had to take care of my running nose, of course. <laughs> a very... A very deceptive thing to do. Calling it a break and in fact keep on doing the same thing only without the viewers witnessing it so anything else that I can do until the next round will start anything at all probably look at more games why, why else would be here would we be here if Anchu Carlson is it is it like the pairing is it starting? Let me see. Maybe it will start soon. It did start! Haha! <laughs> Great timing! I don't have to waste more time. Okay! Carlsen with Black against Ivanchuk. It's a great game. We've been waiting for exactly something like this. Of course we had some great games in the past of this event. But Ivanchuk versus Carlsen. I predict it won't be very eventful. <laughs> Ivanchuk especially with white against these kind of players he knows how to like uh, avoid taking risks and uh, try to bore them and then attempt to to beat them in some imprecise tactical or positional play uh, in a relatively solid positions let's call it level relatively boring positions but this is just something that I noticed uh, Maybe it's only my perspective. So, Queen C2 against the Slav defense. I can't say that this is uh, too harmful for black, but it's definitely a good attempt to, to avoid theory. To avoid, let, not theory, but to avoid uh, concrete variations. And now Castle plays E6, which is not considered to be the most principal response, because it allows a somewhat improved version of the Catalan after G3, Bishop G2. Queen C2 is a useful move and C6 is not uh, what they normally play. Yeah, you can also start with Knight BD2 and only then go G3, Bishop G2. Personally, I don't understand why Carlsen did it, but maybe he just wants to get more play, even if he's slightly uh, less close to equality. <laughs> so, uh, so here G6 is one of the principal moves, aiming to go Bishop F5. Another principal move is obviously to take and go bishop f5 or bishop g4, which Carlsen played himself, which should be equalizing without too much difficulty, in my opinion. So e6 was played, knight bd2, and now, um, okay, we just wait and see what Carlsen plays. I'll bring the camera back. I already have. Nice. So, okay, um... I'll open it on the other monitor so we'll all be able to witness uh, if for one reason or another this uh, game does not update uh, on time. <coughs> <coughs> yes, my breathing skills are not ideal as mentioned thrice at least. I like this word word thrice it means three times for those who didn't understand Th words that start with th are are interesting thrice thrive thrust all of these should be used more often to make people suffer when pronouncing them so um i don't see the round on the other side. Where is it? Round seven. Come on. Where are you? Everyone wants to see you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Turn the radio on. It's Friday night and I won't be long. 
Round seven. Where are you? Okay, maybe I'll log out and log in again. <coughs> Just refresh the page over there. <coughs> Hoping to have round. Okay, is it the Oh finally, okay, it's here. Where is Carson? <laughs> Carson's game is not there for some reason. Something is wrong. I don't see Carson's game in the other. Okay, but for now you can see the moves, some update. I'll, I'll comment on the moves later after I, I get the, the board ready over there. As if it's even important. <coughs> if anyone wonders what the other site I'm looking at, I keep wondering. <laughs> I'll tell later if someone asks directly. So let's see. But no Carson game. Okay. Okay, finally, welcome back, Mr. Anonymous Side. Still, more games appear, but not the ones I was looking for. Uh, Carson, come out, come out, whenever, wherever you are. Okay, forget it. As someone smart once said, imagine a different word starting with F. Forget it. So, D takes C4 and C5. This must be some preparation by Carson. Bishop takes and castles and bishop E7. <coughs> if it's not preparation then it's not the most logical way to play d takes c4 and c5 moving the c pawn twice <clears throat> so what can we expect other than me not breathing well i don't understand the position too much but i can say that black will probably develop his bishop to the long diagonal put his knight on d7 most probably and white is slightly more active right now <laughs> but he still has to finish his development and castle short oh. so are the games ready they decided not to show not to show Carlson <coughs> Excuse me. Just trying to breathe. Come on, come on, turn the radio on. Probably all of you will hate me when this song will get stuck in your head soon enough. Okay, I'm logging out and logging in or refreshing the page or exiting the site. I will not reveal any details about the site where I'm looking unless you ask. So, broadcast somewhere and revealing details without even noticing. Probably everyone knows already. So, is he still thinking? Come on, I need the other side to see the moves. Okay, round seven. Carson playing some game. I don't know why. They don't want to show Carson's game. They just don't want to show it. So, Rook C1. Okay, I'm forced to look at the non-updated version and do what I did in the World Championship. Just find the 
decent way to pass the time while they're thinking rather than update the moves and then we'll get a five move or eight move chunks of updates every now and then and we'll all get confused together there's a saying in hebrew which i'll translate badly uh, which says that if many people have the same trouble it's a little bit consoling so hope you get the point if i were alone watching and there i would have to to watch it without updating and get these five move chunks i'll just get frustrated but you guys are here with suffering with me and choosing to suffer with me it makes my uh let's call it emotional instability <laughs> a little bit less uh dangerous for uh for my learning curve <laughs> what a way to put it wow this was i couldn't have put it in a more complicated way so yeah so let's see no this is chess 24 but the other side you guys have to guess better i'm looking at a different site on a different monitor in case chess 24 does not update fast enough but it's not the official site so all the lawyers out there you can put your pens down put them on the table on the floor in the garbage i don't care no pens should be aimed in my direction oh here it is here is the game is it the same position? This would be disappointing. Where is it? I just saw it. Okay, here it is. Okay. 12e4, 12e4. Okay. Didn't get I just I was bitching for the past 10 minutes in vain. I was hoping at least I gained something. People will be able to relate to my terrible situation here. As someone mentioned yesterday, first world problems being hungry for several hours or not having eaten it eat, not having eaten no not having ate for several hours whatever okay so hmm. Okay, rook c2, rook c2, same position, same position, feeling good. I wonder how prepared Carson was in this particular case. But my guess is that he probably knew everything up until something like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> there's no way to guess. might just go along with his intuition well first i need to evaluate this position to be able to say whether or not he was actually prepared but i have a feeling that just this position where he played c5 is something he was familiar with and that starting from here he might have been improvising but he probably have had one of his seconds analyzing this in the past and he just either remembers the solution or does not because he was thinking he has like half of Ivanchuk's time and now he chose to, to exchange the pawns knight takes e4 and knight d6 which is interesting creating some unbalanced situation in the position but it should favor white because in an endgame to have the outside past pawns is more valuable uh, usually <coughs> The distant past passers. <laughs> so, what are we up to? Oh, 
other than not breathing. So, is it going to update soon? Or are they thinking actually? Okay. <laughs> For the first time in history, Chess24 showed the move before the other side have. Nice. 96 is not shown over there in the secret place. Vichy versus Li. Anand is crushing Li Chao. Well, I will check it out once this game is finished. I'm not leaving my friend here. My hero, sorry. We're not real friends. We didn't really get the chance to speak. But my hero, Magnus. Not leaving him without views. Bishop c6, rook b8, castles. Interesting. So Yeah, Vicious game is quite interesting, I have to admit. But we will get to it later. Later. It's funny, I'm watching it as you guys are being forced to watch this game. This is how evil I am. Vichy So back to our position I can't scroll the moves. What why is it happening? So many technical issues, at least you can hear me from the beginning of this particular stream. Okay, now I can scroll again or to exit and re-enter. We have some updates from here that I didn't look while I was watching Vichy's game. So, what can I say? I'm looking at the updates over there so I will not um, distract the viewers from looking at this position. So... Ah, the position did not update there, so for the first time I'll make moves over there and you guys will make, will see the right position before me. Rook b8, castles, knight b6, no, rook d1, and then Rook d8. Mm. I don't understand anything that's going on, but that means everything is normal. Ivanchuk is extremely strong. That's all I have to say. He leads on time. He probably is better prepared in this position. Somehow surprised the world champion. I remember even in the previous uh, World Rapid Championship, even Chuk caused Carlsen a lot of headache. So he always puts pressure on uh, Carlsen and many of his other opponents. His rating back then was 2840 or something and he play and he even gained rating if I remember correctly. So <coughs> now rook d8 95 was played, which looks nice. So what is Carson going to do? How to even evaluate this position? I mean this is why I'm supposing that my stream is uh relatively 
interesting to some people because I'm supposed to think with my own head and evaluate the position but instead I just talk about the other side not updating and about me not breathing so back to the position 95 on the board black did not finish his development so therefore it should be worse uh, also white has the uh, how do you call it the queen side pawn majority which should grant him an edge bishop f3 f6 knight a c6 f e what oh it's not the right i don't know why i didn't see that f6 was played so here black played the move f6 so in this position for some reason i thought it was another move for white bishop f3 and suddenly white is winning okay so f6 looks like a decent defensive idea and now bishop f3 is probably an extremely strong move threatening knight e c6 so you have to take the knight i play this and i attack both the rook and the bishop and the other rook so you have to lose something if you play rook b7 i'll get knight d8 and bishop b7 and it's terrible for black probably completely lost so he played bishop b7 allowing knight d7 check so wow black is in deep trouble king f7 no king f8 was played and now he has a weak pawn and white has the two bishops and he's still more active so yeah Ivan Shuk is uh, has got the upper end in this game for sure Vasily is not harmless at all especially when it comes to rapid I don't know why some people are extremely strong in blitz some people are much stronger in classical but Ivanchuk has this quality where in rapid is insanely more dangerous than in both other okay of course he's he's a genius and he's he's uh, amazingly powerful both in blitz and classical chess but in rapid is an absolute beast at least in my view so probably it has something to do with this style of posing problems uh, that are not so common and uh, like his opponents can solve these problems given enough time but there's not enough time in rapid and he has enough time to exploit uh, his opponent's mistakes compared to blitz I don't know his play is uh, some something between practical and objective some combination so I guess rapid is some combination of very fast which is practical and very slow which is an objective type of play so yeah I think I became I'm pretending to be a scientist or a psychologist to, to analyze Ivan Shuk like this but I just want to understand why so strong and rapid so king f8 bishop takes e5 a nice tactical idea so the idea is that if king e7 he wants to probably get the piece back somehow i'm trying to understand rook c7 check seems like the way and now whatever you do i'll get d6 knight <laughs> so this is a good move by ivanchuk just taking only five a pawn up doesn't seem like Kassan has too much compensation for it only the second round of the day and Kassan already suffers <laughs> it's very difficult to play when you're trying to get original positions and play and have a different opening every game against top players especially so i'm just very curious to see what happens if Carlsen ever chooses to just play some main lines of some variation i don't know like grunfeld or whatever and then saying if it's a draw then it's a draw and then let his opponents decide and then just know everything by heart and of course some players will make a draw and he might lose a little bit of rating but they will like be criticized by the public because everyone wants to see a show and they will be criticized for ruining the game and whatever and Carson just plays whatever he's forced to do and then this way he'll put some psychological pressure on his opponents to play uh, interesting chess because they, they might not be invited for future events if they just force a draw against him and chicken out so i think this would be interesting to see and also uh if you place the openings that i like i'll see some interesting developments <laughs> the his opponents tries against him and he's uh and the theory will develop faster 
then the fashion around the chess world will be also more uh, leaning towards uh, the openings that are more concrete and interesting so I'm very selfish <laughs> that's the point I don't care about Carson's results only I want to to gain something from his opening play to learn something about the chess uh, development so bishop e5 what is black going to play no updates on both sides I don't understand maybe let's just look at the chat in the meantime Someone is saying in the chat that I'm allergic to Carson's <laughs> lost. Well, maybe. But I didn't predict in advance that he will lose. And uh, he won some games. So, yeah. I can't even breathe anymore. It's insane. <clears throat> my mouth has to remain open so because my nose is out. Completely blocked. I don't understand it. Why, if it's if I can't breathe through my nose, I still have to suffer from a running nose. Let me just not use the nose for a few days and be healthy. I can't use the nose to breathe, and I have to like use Kleenex every two seconds. The nature did not think it through. Carson is my hero, uh, Ziv Feldinger, and, and uh, I didn't confirm that I was allergic to his loss, I just read it out loud that you said it, so <clears throat> I think I'm not allergic to anything, it's not allergy, it's just, I don't know, being ill, I was infected from one of the f friends in Tiberias, the Israeli chess championship. So now knight b c four. Interesting. Attacking the bish, protecting the knight. We can expect bishop takes d six to be played. Knight takes d six probably. But white will. Excuse me. Remain a pawn up. So probably knight c six, bishop c six, rook c six. Yeah, and white is a pawn up. Black doesn't have any compensation, so it's quite close to winning, technically speaking. So, we have some updates. Knight bc4 now. Mm. I don't know. No, it's the same update, knight bc4. So, go to sauna. Okay, good idea, Mr. YouTube. Um, but I don't have a sauna at hand within reach so take a steam bath okay I should I shall do it next time I'm in, I'm in a tournament it will be a long time before I, I have this chance Knight bc4 was played uh, Yeah, so Vichy wins. Nice. We'll check it out. Someone else says Rapport is my hero. <laughs> okay, everyone is entitled to their own heroes. <laughs> I remember a period when Rapport and I were very close in rating so it feels as if uh, he's human <laughs> and with cousin it never happened because like the moment uh, okay he's two years older than me and not younger so like it was always better <laughs> no matter what point in time by by a very long distance and a very large distance so cousin feels unreachable plus I did play some blitz games online against Rapport and uh, I got a few points from him so I 
I feel like uh, while I admire his style, Carson's level is far more impressive at this point in time. I wish Rapport will will make it to the top five in the world and uh, start playing against them because his games are definitely the most fun to watch. But uh, yeah, still far from Carson in my opinion. But not too far. Not as far as I am. <laughs> so... <laughs> Tal, when will you play a Banter Blitz on Chess24 again? I need a rematch. By Thilo28 Fool. Mm, I don't know. I think uh, I should contact them. And uh, check it out. But thanks for reminding me. So, do we have some new... Oh, we have new moves. Sorry, I didn't see. Bishop d6, but it's the same line that I, that I mentioned. Knight b5, rook, no, rook d8. And now, it's not so easy to decide how to defend for black, but uh, Carson made his choice, and how to attack with white now is in question. So, probably, yeah, rook a6 was played, rook c8. It feels, it feels right to defend a3, attack a7, e6 is still hanging. Now probably should make a loft or luft, I don't remember. A loft for the king. Uh, yeah, h4 was played, rook c7. And now what is Carson gonna do? It should be very close to winning, but I'm not sure how. e6 is hanging, but then you can take a3. So... Yeah, we need to think. And Carson is two minutes down on the clock, in addition to probably being lost. So we'll see if he can pull some magic. This is not a position you want to have against Ivanchuk. He has a bishop against knight in an open position, a pawn up, and you have a weakness on e6. So normally two weaknesses are enough for a win, but these are three. So I don't even know what to suggest, but... Okay, the plan for white should be to just bring the king to the center as quickly as possible and this should decide the game because white doesn't have any real weaknesses. So if a chook plays bishop g4, e5, probably a little bit weird because king e7, ah, but king e7 I take with check. Two pieces are attacking it, so e5 is logical. Rook a5, and now if the knight moves then I take. So not so easy for black to defend. If rook here, I have probably bishop c8 and bishop d7 like this. And I'm gonna win the a7 pawn or the e5 pawn. <laughs> I have a choice. So after this, knight d6 was played. Rook takes e5. So the second pawn has been won. Knight c4, rook f5 check, king e7. And now we can expect either a4 or rook to f3 and white is two pawns up and uh, completely winning so he got a second pawn he still has a bishop against knight in an open position so yeah castle will, is is very likely to lose this game <laughs> I'm very likely to go to sleep soon and I have no idea what I'm doing Barely breathing and streaming at the same time. So, even Chuk is playing well. Rook f3 on the board, nice. Yes, and now. I understand, but for some reason not many people are watching this tournament compared to previous rounds. 
in Carlson's game. According to this site, I have only two people watching. I really don't understand. Something is wrong with the site. Some updates on the board, as you can see, probably. So after rook f3, rook knight e5, rook e3, king d6, bishop e2, h6, f4, rook c1. Nothing really is changing in the position. We can expect king f2 to be played, and uh, yeah, it is being played. And uh, well, black has to move the knight. I predict Carson to resign soon because there's not much he can do. Knight d7 on the board. Now, black has almost no squares for the knight. White has so many good, interesting moves to choose from. One that I like is probably rook g3, just taking on g7, and also rook g6 check in mind. And, uh, well, I'll have some... The f pawn will become a passed pawn, and it's already quite advanced. And it's not so easy even for black to get these pawns. So I predict rook g3, rook a1, rook takes g7, rook takes a3, rook g6 check, taking this h6 pawn. Castle will resign sooner or later. Okay, bishop f3 was played. Rook c2 check. It's not so bad from, from Ivanchuk, of course. He doesn't have to listen to me. Now king somewhere. King g3, yeah, moving forward always. Now another plan is in mind. Everything is protected, he just wants to bring the king over to g6 and uh, it will decide the game. So probably knight f6 is called for. And uh, no, rook a2 was played. I don't understand what would have happened. If knight f6, how would white proceed? Hmm. Rook a2 was played instead. Rook d3 check, okay. So, just want to mention that here after knight f6, probably a logical plan for white would be f5, followed by king f4 and g4, g5, and the game is probably finished. So, yeah. Rook d3, king e7. Rook c3, king d8. Okay, f5, king f4, g4. Oh, king g4 followed by king f5. Should be more than enough in this gruesome position for Carlsen. <sighs> His play in this opening has been abysmal. King g4. Carlsen should resign. I don't think he has any chance. No weaknesses, no squares for the knight. Two pawns up, a bishop versus a knight. A king is more active, he's coming to g6. What's the point? Just release everyone from watching this game and let us watch Anan versus Li Chao. Rook d2. We'll have more time to recover for the next round and regain your place in top so rook c6 on the board going to for a6 which is even more active to protect the pawn from here and attack a7 just zero chances in my opinion so i have another game in mind so <coughs> Okay, I, I will not commentate on this game in the next few moments. Feel free to enjoy the moves and learn from them. I will have a quick look at the, the two other games that I mentioned, which are... Ah, sorry, the, the one other game. And I, I was offered to have a look at another game as well. So, uh, by my friend. So... Let's see. First one we'll look later is Anand versus Li Chao. And the second one 
is Mamedjaro versus Mer Kumian, which is still in progress. No, yeah, it is. Okay, it's still in progress. So we'll move directly to Mamedjaro first, and we'll look at Anand's game before the next round. Don't don't you worry, the game is already finished. Anand won, so we will look at it briefly after the round, after the 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 rest of the games that are in progress. Excuse me. So. My life is brilliant. My life is pure. I saw an angel. Of that I'm sure. Okay, so you guys enjoy this particular game. I'll enjoy another one. In the meantime, I'm thinking yeah, probably we will look at the other game from the beginning. Because it will finish soon. Probably before Carson will resign. And if Carson happens to have a chance, I will get back to Carson's game. But I just don't see it happening yet. Wow, such an interesting endgame. And Carson resigned. Let's move quickly before the endgame will reach an end. So, Melk, where are you? Mamediarov, Melk. Melkumian. Where are they? Come on. Mamediarov. Mamediarov. No. Where are you? Where are you? Man, it doesn't make sense that I can't find him. Okay, I have to look better. So here, Mamediarov with white. Which board is it? Does it say? It doesn't say the board, come on. Ah, it's not the right round, oh. Okay. Yeah, from here. Okay, Mamediarov Mokumian. Okay, now we have it. So, this is a very interesting endgame, in my opinion. It's probably... Okay, I don't want to say anything before I understand what's going on. I don't want to mislead anyone, and especially not myself. So... Uh, okay. So, let's just state the obvious first. White has a rook versus a bishop. Should be a winning advantage under normal circumstances, but without the pawns, it's an easy draw. So, and unfortunately for white, these are age pawns, not other pawns where white can potentially sacrifice the rook for both of black's pieces, because then the king, the black king, will just go to h8 and it will be an easy draw. So, he needs to use some technique to try to ru run, force the king away, farther and farther away, and... Uh, if he could get him for the to the A file, for example, and have the rook on B3, then maybe it's at the right moment he can suck the rook for the G3 bishop and start pushing the pawn. But my memory tells me that when the pawn is on H4, then from H3 it will be too far to reach H8 before the king will get it get there to the corner. So I think the king here on B6 is perfectly safe. So my intuition tells me that this should be a draw, but I'll be glad to be proven wrong and to learn something uh, from this endgame. And we'll we'll see how, how they reach the exchange sacrifice earlier. I think if it will be a draw, it will be even more interesting to, to review the game and how, how well Melkumian might have defended earlier. You know what? While you guys are watching this position and, and form your own opinion about uh, about this ending... I will watch the game to...
prepare myself in case I need I want to comment on it in one interesting moment. Oh man, it doesn't stop following the game. Uh, it keeps following the game so I cannot analyze what happened before every time they make a move. Come on, there was a button to stop watching them. I think I got it, okay. <coughs> okay, now I'll be watching the game. Quietly, without interrupting you guys. Enjoying the ending. Well, I just watched the entirety of this game until this position. And well, the end, the middle game was very interesting, but very complicated as well. There's no time to go through it. So after we look at the Anand Lee Chao game, we'll go back to this ending once it's finished, because uh, I have some questions. I want to sh to introduce to the viewers.
Okay. Wow, this endgame is fantastic. Okay, we'll look at it soon. We'll look at it soon. So, I'll ask the viewers to tell me in the meantime, how do you evaluate this position? Is it a draw? Is it a win? I see someone is writing white is winning. But anyone else has an idea or an evaluation? Well, black is forced to move the rook away, the bishop away, and he has, and he cannot get made it, of course. There is no Tsukzvank. The only thing he can try is to get the h pawn somehow, but. Whenever he attacks it, black will just play bishop g3. Okay, king a8 is forced because otherwise rook f2 is winning. And now we can went back. So he went to b8, sorry. Anyway, rook b7, king here, king b6. So white has quite a clear idea. But I don't think it should ever win because. Oh, wait. What? Wait, wasn't king c8 possible? Maybe this is actually winning because now I can go king a6. Oh, but then you'll go bishop g3. There is no tsukzvank. Oh, now bishop g3 and there is no tsukzvank. Rook b4. Oh, there, there is. Oh my god, is it winning? <laughs> I don't know. Bishop f2 or bishop e1 are forced. Now I can move the rook and then rook b7 when the bishop is on g3. I might get the pawn. So I can go. How do I force the bishop to g3? So check. I think this should be winning. So rook f4 forcing bishop g3 or bishop. Yeah. Then I move rook f8, rook bishop b8, then I move rook f7, he moved the bishop somewhere, I get rook to h7, you have to defend, and then I go rook b7 and it's at Zugzvan. No, it's not, because you always have bishop f2. Oh, it's, it's probably a draw. <laughs> wow, this is not easy to understand. It's not easy. Maybe it's a win, <laughs> but I don't see any way to to proceed for the win. Okay. I should probably concentrate rather than react to the position. So, yeah. Is it winning or is it not? Okay, excuse me for not talking, I just really need to concentrate for a moment. Okay. I hope you'll forgive me if I'll just make moves on the board to make it easier for myself. It's not a good role model, usually I have to do it, I think it's better to do everything uh, in my head, blindfolded, like calculate the position, imagine it, but I just want to, the viewers to see my line of thinking. So, this position, bishop f2. Okay, I want to move the rook. I'm thinking, move it, we go bishop g3. So, just for example. Okay, I'll just try to force the position. So, something like this. <coughs> now rook b7 you move the bish you have to move it you're not forced to move it anywhere actually so if 
you move it here. Oh, but maybe I have some king b6 and king c6 ideas. Okay, so bishop f2 is the position in the game. You went rook b4. Hmm. Okay, I don't want to interrupt the viewers. So, rook f4 on the board. I'll just analyze the position on the other board. And hopefully you will analyze it in your head over here and try to understand whether or not it's winning. But this endgame is fantastic, so I don't mind missing out on Anand versus Li Chao for now. And uh, hopefully the viewers will forgive me. So, I'll analyze over here. Well, maybe there's no point to analyze, maybe we'll just see the game. <laughs> I didn't consider that we can just learn from seeing the game. Well, let's look at the game, sorry. King to c7, wow. This looks nice. Now the bishop from a7 will not protect h4. That's lovely. Lovely technique. So now I'll just go rook b7. Okay. So no need to, to analyze too deeply. Just rook b7. Bishop will move wherever. I'll go rook somewhere. And now, sorry, not like this. Rook b2. He'll move the bishop. I'll go rook b4. He'll be forced to move it. I'll go rook a4. Rook takes h4 and you will resign. Wow. So, was it a draw in the beginning? I'm not sure, but now it looks winning for white easily. I'll just get a rook out there. So, next moves for white are rook g2, if bishop f2, and then rook g4 attacking the pawn. Rook a4 and rook takes h4. Okay, so, I mean, the arrow demonstrated the winning concepts. I'm a little bit disappointed I didn't come up with it myself, but at least I learned something I didn't know before. No, now rook g1. The next move. Rook a1. Rook b1, rook b4, rook b7. Okay. Need to <laughs> still find the right way to to pull the win. I'm not sure I see it. Do we have more moves being played? <coughs> I'm not sure, but I see on the other board already the winning position, so I'll just show it. Move 83, bishop e1, rook g1, was played in the game, bishop f2, rook g2, Bishop a7, rook g4, and that's it. Bishop f2, rook a4 check, and uh, I assume you will resign, but... Wow, what a game, what an end game. <laughs> winning like this. Was it winning all along? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> So, <coughs> okay, four check. Yeah. Did you resign? No updates on both sides. Both boards don't update, but okay, I hope everyone here can agree that bishop a7 is the only legal move. Rook takes h4 and. Uh, just for for uh, simply for, for the sake of simplicity, I'll just show this line. And now h4, and I'll just promote easily. There is no chance that black will be in time to stop this pawn. There is the square rule. I don't have arrows here, but just imagine a square. 
from this square to this one to this one this is a square in geometry if the king can the black king cannot enter this square then he will not be in time so and he needs one two three so he is lacking two moves not even one to reach this pawn and just to demonstrate so now this is the square this small square is where the king needs to be king e7 and as you can see he, need one, he needs one and two more moves for a draw so this is easily won and he resigned okay I'll go back to this ending if I have time before the next round but first let us look at the Anand versus Li Chao uh, game sorry it's not here you can watch it only here Nan Li Chao, okay, let's have a look. So it was a Rouser Sicilian, one of the most topical lines of the Sicilian defense nowadays. This It's not too fashionable, but I've seen Li Chao playing it quite often, this Bishop D7 line. If any top players play the Rouser nowadays, they choose this Bishop D7 variation. Anan chose the most popular line. And B4 it is not the main line, normally Queen B6, Knight X6, Bishop takes E6 is the variation. And there is a player from Croatia named uh, Zdenko Kožul who played this variation for his entire life, more or less. And uh, among me and my friends, I'm not sure if it's official, but we refer to this variation as the Kožul variation, this position of the Sicilian uh, Rouser. And um, yeah, Queen B6 is the move that he uh, employed most of his life. So before, I'm not too familiar with. Anand plays the typical line, puts his bishop here. Well, it's it's not the most common line, but knight on e2 is very good. So I guess he analyzed this particular variation. And now g4, g5, and rook h g1. Nice. So very opening up the position very aggressively. Now fg, castles, knight f4. Excuse me for the delay. Something about the side, knight c6, takes g6. Yeah, this is just not looking good for Li Chao. Now, oh, this is lovely. So this position reminds me of uh, the game, <laughs> I forgot, Fisher. I will check versus who real quick because I have to mention it correctly. So I think it's... Birn versus Fisher, but I'm not sure. I'll verify. Um, so it's one of the most famous games by Robert James Fisher. Okay, he has many that are extremely famous, but this particular game, yeah, it's the, the right one. So basically, he had. He was black and he had the knight on e3 that was attacking like two uh, pieces, a rook, a, a bishop and a queen. So it's similar to here. He was attacking and the queen moved and then he could take the rook or the bishop and he took the bishop and then after king takes he made some quiet move. Instead of attacking he made the move with the queen that was quiet. It was queen d8 to d7. Here, queen takes d6 is a somewhat silent move because, of course, there is a threat, but it doesn't uh, capture anything uh, too valuable and it doesn't give any checks right now. And it hangs a piece. It's very similar in nature to, to, this, other, to this other game. I remember back then, uh, the player with black pieces, with the black pieces, Robert James Fisher, also known as Bobby Fischer, played a quiet queen move without being, uh, with, with, while being a piece down. So here Anand is not a piece down, but he gives up a piece, and then he'll just get queen e7, queen h7 mate. Yeah. So Li Chao try to defend. Bishop takes e4. Wow. You cannot take with the bishop because of the pin. So you have to take with the rook, and now a simple move: rook g f1, threatening rook f7. And black is completely paralyzed. What a wonderful game. In the style of Bobby Fischer. At least in my eyes. Nice. So everything here looks 
very very lovely but this particular move i think is the move of the game two rooks like the ultimate proof of uh let's call it uh material versus i'm not sure how to say it in english but let's call it spiritual uh play i don't know like there's material and there is hmm yeah, in Hebrew you say spiritual, but it sounds better than English. So you go for the for the initiative rather for the quality of the pieces rather than the quantity. So you can take two rooks, but you take the bishop instead, and then you have a tremendous attack because this bishop was the best defender of the black position. So now queen h6 is a major threat. You have to take back. And now after queen d6, everything just collapse, collapses. So, yeah, a wonderful example of uh, Anand's feel for the position and uh, for the initiative. Wonderful game. Uh, let's go back to the Li Chao, no, sorry, to the Mamedyarov Malkumian endgame that we just saw. I want to analyze it a little bit before the next round starts. Still some minutes to go. Okay, so we, he waited for Mamedyarov to put a queen on the board. No, he didn't. He resigned here already. <laughs> this is just my analysis. Okay, so I'll not start from the beginning. I'll just show where the exchange sacrifice took place, if you don't mind. So the game we saw, by the way, was Birn versus Fischer. I'll write it in the chat now, so in case anyone wants to look it up. Actually, I'll just put a link in the chat. I think I'm allowed. <laughs> so, let's see. So this is a link to the game that I was just talking about. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so now everyone can see it. And uh, let's see. The other thing I wanted to do was to look at the end game so I'll demonstrate where exactly the exchange sack took place so I believe it was somewhere in the first 30 moves maybe I'm wrong okay so move number 14 already very early on so the game is not as long as I thought it was. So here, in this position, I'll just mention that the opening was Grunfeld defense. This is the Grunfeld defense. Milkumian with black. And Mamidiarov played a rare line, capturing a knight f3 and bishop g5, which is a very rare line, trying to surprise his opponent. We reacted probably quite decently. And now, okay, there are different options, but he chose knight c5. This is not a very well-known position. They already diverted from the main lines, in my opinion, <coughs> or to my understanding. And now, <coughs> here, Mokumian chose to sacrifice the exchange, which in itself looks very decent in order to activate the knight. And I think he should have enough compensation, but the game developed, and uh, probably Mamed Yarov somehow outplayed him later on, and managed to reach... Uh, this end game that we saw earlier so I'll just reach the relevant position without any distractions so they reached this end game which I don't know if it's winning or not uh, it's hard to say and it's also very hard to say if black should should keep the rooks on the board or not but anyhow white is forced to allow the exchange of rooks to, to capture b6 so we will not ponder too much about this particular decision. So black could technically play rook f5 and then after rook b6, king h7 and try to keep the rooks on the board. Sh might be uh, better drawing chances, chance, but maybe not. So king g8, and now he's forced to exchange because g6 is hanging. <coughs> and now this position in question is the one which I'm not sure if it's a draw or not. So it looks like sooner or later white will be forced to push f5. And of course if black captures then after king takes f5 then it will be problematic for uh, black to 
to play actively. It doesn't get this h4 and bishop on g3 mechanism. So, a king g7, rook c2. At some point, he will he forces black to capture, and they get this type of position, which looks like both of them did play it correctly. So this is where our adventure begins. So this is the critical moment, I think. And now, how to evaluate this endgame is probably very important. Please, anyone who, who has either engines or table bases or whatever, don't tell me the answer. I want to explore it myself. This way I'll remember it better. Maybe someone else will learn in the process. Uh, okay, I, I will make sure that the games did not start by now, because they might have. Um, where are they? Okay, let's make sure they probably have started. Yeah, Queen D7, the final move by Bobby Fischer. That's correct. Fakih Aminuddin. Sorry if I mispronounce it. I do it for everyone. Okay, so I don't see the game just yet. So they didn't start. Let's analyze this endgame. And try to understand. But judging from the game continuation and from the result, I would say that this position should be winning for white. <laughs> but maybe somewhere along the way, black had the, the draw within reach, as usually happens in these cases. <laughs> There's a nice uh, book by uh, Mark Dvoretsky uh, who, who deceased. Uh, uh, recently uh, so it's called tragic comedies in the endgame and uh, basically both players make mistakes which is tragic but because they both make it and it seems relatively simple when you look at it it's also it has some comic uh, value so it's called tragic comedies in the endgame and I personally really enjoyed uh, reading some of the examples I still have to finish the book and to look at all the examples of course i try to solve it myself and not just see the solutions so it takes a, long, a lot of time and uh one of the ways to improve your chess by the way is to solve exercises of different uh of different types i would call it of different uh characteristics of the game and the end games are a very important part of the of the game and the uh, Solving exercises about the endgame improves our technique and our understanding of endgames and chess in general. So we have pairings, Kopian versus Carlsen. Carlsen is black. Once the game starts, I will move to the game, but this is our critical moment of, of the, of the, let's call it the endgame, at least to my understanding. Move number 49, why to move? Whether it's winning or not, is uh, something uh, I have to figure out. But if I if I were to work on this position, I wouldn't be streaming myself thinking. I would just sit for like 20 or 30 minutes. Maybe the first five minutes I would think and the rest I will move the pieces around until I figure out what's going on. And then of course after half an hour or 40 minutes spent on the position, at least I would check it with the table base and then make sure I understand all the subtleties. I urge anyone who's ambitious about his chess to check it out himself do not check the solution until you've spent at least 30 minutes on the position uh, and the more energy you spend on it the more you learn in case of a mistake that's my uh, evaluation of this uh, of, of the learning uh, process so m being wrong is not so bad as long as you do it right <laughs> So here, okay, so they did not start the next game yet, I believe. So I allow myself to concentrate for a moment and bring a mandarin because I start to feel a little bit hungry. I'm gonna need to use both of my hands for inserting moves and analyzing and so on, and making sure the stream is working. Uh, during the next round, so I'll eat while we are dealing with this scenario. So I'm sure everyone is used to my bad manners by now. Anyone? Everyone? Yeah. Okay. 
so feel free to correct my English also I'd like that so um, either now or in the comments uh, to the video once it's finished one of the reasons I enjoy this channel is because I, I believe it will help me improve my English some people say it's good but I strongly disagree especially my accent so back to the game um, <coughs> so let's see here well the first thing I'll mention is that if I could keep black king on the king side and somehow threaten mate it would be more efficient than driving him all the way to the queen side but i'm sure mamadiarov would have done it if he if he had a an easy way of doing so but i'll just try to check a variation in my mind and then i'll if if i don't see the fence i'll show it here Maybe my, while I'm eating, it's a decent idea, so that the viewers won't be able to, won't have to watch me. So we can just focus on the position and hear the sound of me chewing a mandarin. It has a lovely background. Oh, not the right one. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> I hope that uh, people are thinking and not just wondering why is the broadcast stuck. You are supposed to think about this position. I want the viewers to also improve in the process and not just be entertained. And uh, have some, be a little bit more invested than just watching passively. So Okay, so I'm not sure how to exactly try to win here, but I I think I I found a challenging idea that I don't understand why well, the arrow did not try it at least before going to the other side. Probably he has only 50 moves to do it, so he didn't want to waste time and he was confident in his try, but I feel like cutting the king on the f-file and trying to somehow create Sukzwang might work. So... I'll bring the camera back in a moment after I've washed my hands. Show the variation.
bit, excuse me. Just 10 more seconds. You know what? One more minute even. Just think about this position. Try to make the variations work in your mind. But the first move that I'm thinking about is rook f6. Try to figure out what's going on because my idea is, is quite simple and I'll show it in a moment, okay? Just think about it uh, while I'm gone. Okay, now I'm officially back, so, alright, so let's analyze this position very quickly before the game start. I assume it didn't start because I don't see the moves uh, in the broadcast, so, in the site. So, let's see, oh, excuse me, so now, my idea is to go rook f7 check, and now I expect uh, black to play king g7, and now, a very simple move. Rook f1. The point is that you cannot move the bishop because I will take h4 and we'll be winning probably. By the way, this might be a draw after I take the pawn if the pawn is already on h6. But, uh, oh, oh, forget it. It's the wrong bishop. If it was the white squared bishop and this pawn was on h6, it might have been a draw. Maybe also on h5 there are some drawing chances. But if the pawn is backwards on h4 or h3 with the light squared bishop, it should be an easy win, uh, for professionals of course, uh, and uh, with this bishop it's just an easy win anyway. So you shouldn't give me the pawn, so you can't move the bishop, you have to move the king. If you move to h7, I'll just continue the same mechanism like this, wherever you put the king, and now you don't really have uh, anything to do. You cannot move the king anymore, because I will mate you, so you have to move the bishop. But fortunately for you right now, you're not forced to lose because uh, immediately because you don't have to protect the pawn. Bishop e1 is probably lost because of this, and then just simply rook e8 check and rook d8, and it's Zugzwang made on the next move. So I'm thinking thinking that bishop h2 should be the only move, with the idea to play king f8 against any rook move. But but I do have this mechanism. Rook a7, king f8, rook a4, bishop g3, and now rook e4. And this is a typical Zugzwang in this position. So I think this endgame should be lost for black. Because if the king moves, I have rook e8 mate. If the bishop moves here, I have this fork. And if you move anywhere else with the bishop, I have rook takes h4, and then once again I'm winning. So yeah, rook f6 might have been the right way to go. And maybe this after the king got to f8 maybe it was a draw somewhere along the way maybe not this i'll leave to the table base to verify but uh i cannot say i'm sure there was a draw somewhere because this is how it th these things work when you don't go with the right plan this doesn't feel like the right plan i mean to drive the king away somewhere here the king sh should be able to to go far enough maybe to b5 i don't know just to avoid going to the corner. This wasn't the right strategy. Moving the king somewhere. Like b5. I think this shouldn't lose. But uh, maybe it does. I'll check it later. I don't think we have enough time to check everything. I hope you learned something from this particular analysis. Um... So people are discussing the position, this is lovely. I'm glad I encouraged you to, to think a little bit. Um, so moving on. Um, let's see, do we have a new round? Round number eight. Um, 
Come on. Can't even press the button. Round 8 cannot be pressed. Okay, I'll refresh the page for a moment. If you don't mind. So... Round 8. Did it start? I apologize if it did, but I don't see it anywhere. So... Anyway, let's just wait for it to start while we talk a little bit. Um... <clears throat> so where is the round so we saw a lot of interesting games we focused only on three but I like it to keep it simple not to look at all the games we saw three different games but we we learned something very very nice from either one from Ivanchuk we have some <laughs> lightning storm outside but uh, which kind of metaphorically reminds me of Carson's <laughs> mood right now probably so I want to mention that we learned we saw three different games in round number seven which is the second round today uh, first one was by Car Ivanchuk versus Carson we saw how what an incredible player Ivanchuk is and how to convert a winning endgame with a bishop versus a knight, especially with a pawn up. The fact that two weaknesses are enough for a win usually, and that Carson is not a god despite being my hero, and uh, that he, st he also has to play very correctly in the opening, otherwise he will be in trouble, and and I mentioned a lot of things about this uh, different concepts about uh, these two players and what I would like to see from them. The second thing we saw was Anand playing in the style of, Frisch, of Bobby Fischer, uh, attacking against Li Chao, probably the most beautiful round of uh, game of this event that I have seen so far. Absolutely fantastic attack by Anand. And the third one, just to balance all the, all the let's call it sharp concepts, was the game between Mamidiarov and Milkumian, which reached this very curious ending which we analyzed. So, now we have a move, just as I finished talking about the previous round, as if they can hear me. So let's see if the other side uh, shows the moves. So, well, it does, but we don't have the moves there. So fortunately, once again, second time in history, Chess24 is ahead of the mysterious other side that I'm looking, which is not the official side. Get your pens down immediately. <coughs> Move them away. Or your fingers away from the keyboard. And we have the London system. Once again, Carson's, Carson versus Yakovenko. This is a nice struggle. Wow. Such a storm outside. I, I see lightnings. I see... I, I'm gonna hear... Yeah. I'm gonna hear... No, thunders. I see thunders. <laughs> and I'm gonna hear lightning. No, lightning is the same. Come on. How do you say it in English? Okay. Forget the game. I have to check. How do you say it in English? Wow, I don't know any, any words. So... A thunder. Oh, it, it is a thunder. Okay, I wasn't wrong. Okay. <laughs> I thought the thunder was a synonym to the word lightning, so, okay. No worries here. So, you can see a lightning and hear a thunder. Remember, if you don't improve your chess, you might as well learn some English. So, back to the game. London system. This time with starting with knight f3 for one reason or another. And bishop g3, castles c4. The normal mainline is knight bd2. And then if c5, then white normally plays c3, followed by either bishop d3 or bishop b5 in case of knight c6. But uh, Carson diverts from main theory, probably because this is objectively equal, if black is correct. And uh, since he's not committed to c5, he has other ideas involving, for example, b6. And after bishop d3, some bishop a6, exchanging this bishop, or uh, just putting it on b7, uh, like Gordelius played. In one of the earlier rounds, and I believe he equalized but lost eventually. Was it against Ivanchuk? I don't remember. Anyway, uh, Carson played c4, which is an interesting move in itself. 
c5 another very principled response by black because he just developed so far and uh, if white wants to open up the center black should uh, invite him to do so gladly because he just he didn't waste any moves and white did he spent two moves with this bishop so bishop f4 and followed by bishop g3 so white is technically uh, one move behind of course he started but he is not ahead in development, so there is no justification for an advantage in case of opening up the center. So, in this particular moment, uh, black has every right to open up the center. Of course, the first player who captures pawns in the center, in a way, gives up something. I like the word spiritually, but it sounds a little bit religious to some people, so I'm not sure you understand the same meaning that I'm meaning. So... There is no religious meaning behind the word spiritually. I just mean, like, you can say that the pieces are material and the concepts are like the wind. Yeah? I know the wind is, is a physical thing, but you get... I hope you get the point. So, when I, when I talk about anything spiritual in context with chess, I'm talking about strategical concepts and initiative and uh, stuff that are less tangible than material non-materialistic concepts okay so back to the game usually more abstract things so here knight c3 as i mentioned he doesn't want to break the tension in the center and i would consider playing knight c6 here as black uh once again not breaking the tension probably one of them will emerge with an isolated pawn but it, sh it shouldn't be too much okay d takes c4 just completely disobeying everything I just said but what's the point if bishop takes c4 I don't know probably just cd okay I have to look at this position afterwards with an engine and try to analyze it it's very concrete probably but principles are there for a reason and there are exceptions to them I'm not sure if this is one of them but let's just believe that these players know what they're doing d takes c5 now the bishop also moved twice so Bishop takes c4 is to be expected now. The, the player who will capture the, his opponent's queen will give up a tempo. So bishop c4 on the board, a6, we can expect castles or a4 from white. <coughs> so... What can we say? A6 on the board. White is um, thinking. He shouldn't be better. At least not by, to my understanding. I still don't see moves on the other side. So maybe I should just refresh that page. Hope for the best. No, still no moves. Maybe they they have a problem. I just don't show moves. Yeah, no moves anywhere. Come on. So many technical issues. So, what did I want to do? Okay, in the meantime, I'll check the database for any any novelties in this game. Oh, wrong board. Okay, excuse me for uh, not uh, analyzing this position, but I want to verify that it's okay for both players, theoretically speaking, without looking with an engine. I want to emphasize this part. So, bishop f4, d5, knight f3, e6, forget the move order, I'll just reach the same position after c4. So, castle, c4. Only five games? No, a little bit more. 
No c5 is the main move, 50% score. Berkes played it with white. Kamsky, Georgiev, a lot of strong players. C5 was played by Ivanchuk, Rachmanov, Plasket. <laughs> I'm not sure it's. Yeah, it's the right Plasket, the one who used to be a very strong player. So, knight c3. Now knight c6 wasn't played. He played d takes c4, which I think is a novelty in this position. cd4 is the main line, after which usually they went knight takes d4 or ed4. Both cases, decent results for black. d takes c4 was a novelty, so let's just show the position. This d takes c4 over here by black. And now, um, what can I say? dc5, bishop c5, bishop c4, a6, it looks decent. d takes c4, yeah. We are in new territory, there is no way to correctly evaluate it without an engine. I mean, I, there, I can attempt to say by logic that I think that black should be fine, but I mean, I need to analyze the position to understand it better. Because chess is very concrete nowadays. Let's see if the other side started broadcasting the games already. Nope. <coughs> Refresh it again. Doha round 8. They don't even have Carson's game. Anyway, yeah. Someone is saying an Aronian is going to win the tournament. Well, um, he's leading after having beat uh, Mamed Yarov. I should have looked at his game also, but I was too fascinated by all the three games that we had. He made a draw in the next round. So the previous round, round number seven, he made a draw with Grishuk, with black. Not such a bad result, especially uh, given the fact that uh, you're leading the tournament. And uh, yeah, Aronian has six out of seven, and Korobov caught up with him. He beat another player. He beat Dominguez. <coughs> wow. So both still have six out of seven. I'm not sure what the tiebreak rules are, but... <coughs> <coughs> oh, man. But the fact that Aronian beat. <coughs> Kor wait. Did Ar yeah, Aronian managed to win against Korobov should be in his favor in case of a tie score at the end. So, eight rounds to go in case you don't know. We're almost halfway through the tournament. And now. Aronian plays on the top board against Mamed Yarov, Korobov on the second board against Ivanchuk, who are both uh, half a point behind, trailing only half a point behind. In this particular game that we are looking, so I didn't mention, after a6, white just simply castled, b5, put these pieces on the right squares, d3 and e2, the queen belongs in e2 in this structure. It's likely that black will put his queen on e7 sooner or later. And now, Probably black will develop his knight to an active square. <coughs> and I will be having difficulties to breathe. Everything will be normal. So... Let's see. Someone is complimenting me in the chat for uh, being sick and still streaming. So thanks, Wall Whole Horse. Bad stories? No, bad. Bad Ortiz. I don't know. Thanks for the compliment. Uh, but I'm not doing it from loyalty to the viewers. It's just that chess is the main passion, if not the only. I'll call it the main passion in my life. 
the only serious one I mean of course and uh, since I remember myself whenever I was sick what I would have done was either watching chess games or studying chess if I felt energetic enough or most likely just played blitz the entire in the entire day and uh, yeah and uh, this has been my medicine since I remember myself so uh, I'm sick I don't stream <laughs> despite being sick I'm streaming because the tournament is here and I if I watch it as my medicine I might as well stream it in the process so I don't deserve all the kind words so back to the game Rook a d1 as expected probably I would expect black to put the knight on c6 but he played knight bd7 shouldn't be such a mistake it's not so bad this is a good square for the knight it can go to c5 later on it's, it's very solid blocks the d file also from c6 it blocks the bishop so the bishop is open queen b6 another active move I suggested to put it on e7 but b6 might make more sense with the bishop on g3 normally white also has pawns on a3 and b4 and this bishop is on b2 and then black does the same puts a bishop on d6 and queen on e7 and then normally the first player to play either knight e5 or knight e4 will have the initiative uh, but uh, yeah it's hard to 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 show you have to imagine it so queen b6 is a logical uh, response from Yakovenko uh, e4 and another logical move from Carlsen he, there is no symmetry so there is no reason for him to to just play slowly he has to play actively so he can go e5 next it's probably a threat yeah and now I mean knight h5 yeah exactly wants to get a bishop now white do, doesn't know does not want to go bishop h4 because of knight f4 and uh, <coughs> yeah And uh, he played e5, knight g3, h3, very logical moves so far from both sides. Is the other side showing the game already? I think it finally solved the issues. Okay. So. Okay, so very interesting position so far. I can't say that uh, Yakovenko made anything wrong. Kassen, in a sense, from the spiritual point of view, as I like to say, uh, moved his pieces several times. So just mentioning, he moved his bishop to f4 and then to g3. And later on, he moved the pawn to e3, as you can see here. And now once again to e4 and once again to e5 so from development point of view okay now black also finished his development a little bit behind but from development point of view uh, black has the two bishops white has a little bit more space because of this pawn on e5 but it also gives away some squares I think this bishop is a monster so uh, it should be exchanged sometime soon and black shouldn't have any troubles because this pawn is not only strong it's also weak uh, white can also has to defend it so in the two open files will allow black to exchange some pieces and relieve the tension uh, despite being uh, li with a little bit less space I'd probably take black in this position it's easier to play with black at least uh, in my to my taste so I hope it says something about uh, the fact that I don't like Carson's choice <clears throat> so 
After this game, we will look at Aronian versus Mamedyarov. Wow, so many spammers in the chat. <laughs> I can say non-material instead of spiritual in English if you want to minimize religious connotations. Thanks! Hello, chess. That's very logical, but I would like to um, to also uh, use one word if possible, but I will use this uh, in the meantime. So thanks for the advice. And uh, Yeah. So Bishop E4 was played and uh, as I predicted just trying to exchange this monster on B7. So someone is asking is there bishop takes h7? I don't think so. I don't think bishop takes h7 is possible. Bishop e7 is a nice looking move. Preparing knight c5, preventing knight g5 related ideas. Let's quickly look at bishop takes h7. Just to show. Normally this is considered very the typical attack uh, for for white. Yeah. But I think that this move, knight takes e5, should be enough of a defense. Because it protects f7 and in case of this, king e7, black is still a piece up. And it shouldn't be in too much trouble. And I'll just 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 my intuition. I I hope I'm right. But and especially after the next move, Bishop e4, where Black played Bishop e7, there's no more Knight g5 business. So <coughs> and just one more thing after Knight g5 check, White has to take into account this move King g6 because here there's no Bishop on c1. So it makes some difference. And uh, queen g4 can be met with knight takes e5, for example. Tempo on the queen. So knight e4, bishop e7, bishop takes b7, queen takes b7, knight e4. The position looks rather equal to me. But uh, I don't know. I might be I might be wrong. Someone asked in the chat what's the difference between rook ad1 and rook fd1. Well, if the rook was on a1, I would have put, be able, been able to put it on c1, and here it does two things. It protects f2, which might have been useful earlier with the battery on this diagonal. Let me just demonstrate. Uh, so more or less here, like here, there was a, there's a battery of the queen and bishop, so the rook might protect the f2 square. And another uh, thing is that you might be able to put the rook on e1 later. And if you ever capture on d1, it will not be with check. So it's never an easy choice. One of the most difficult choices in chess is to decide which rook to put on an open file. My coach uh, Ilya Botvinnik used to give me these exercises and I would think for half an hour and will always get it wrong. And then just for, for the fun of it, after a year or so, he would give me the same exercise and I would still get it wrong. <laughs> and uh, feel like uh, nothing has changed. It's impossible to understand the subtleties. So it's like it gets so confusing and complex. Sometimes it's possible to get it right, but just because it's only two choices. But with such a small amount of choices, there is no excuse for missing details. And uh, there's so many details with these type of questions, which rook to put on an open file. So the position has developed a little bit. We have the same exact position on both sides. And, uh, well, Yakovenko is a very, very strong player. He's not giving in against uh, the mighty world champion. Although, I have to mention that this move, uh, knight c5, once again, like Bok did in the first round of this day, uh, tries to exchange some pieces and maybe... It would be more recommended to, I don't know, just 
keep the pieces on because if you don't play against the war champion you might consider playing for an advantage here with black and not just exchange this knight on c5 I don't have any other move that I can offer but yeah, this feels like black is playing for equality which is okay I, th I think he will get it but winning against Kassan is a nice thing to do <laughs> especially with black so same update great <coughs> okay I just want to mention that I start I had a Kleenex uh, over here and uh, by the time that we barely reached the halfway of the round I already completely finished it you see and by the way if you happen to see me the CEO of Kleenex please sponsor my channel okay so one is out fortunately I have three more of them in my apartment got a package so I didn't think I will open it today but okay I can hardly complain so let's hope I will not finish the second one before the end of the day's uh, spectacle Okay, so back to the game. Queen b6 and he's thinking. No updates on both sides. And uh, he wants to capture on d6. White is thinking. Carlsen is considering different ways to protect the pawn. Well, one move that comes to mind is queen to e5. Another one is probably b4 to attack the knight and then see how to defend if the knight moves to b7 for example i can go d7 already and this knight is a little bit weak and uh, another option that comes to my mind is knight e5 because now if rook takes d6 i have this idea of knight takes f7 with queen f3 check attacking the king and the rook so these are three options that make sense right now and uh, we'll see what Kassen will choose. He already chose b4, okay. Knight d7, so Yakovenko is not going for the pawn, he's going for blockading the pawn. So, I think that in a way it admits that knight c5 was not the best move, he just wants to equalize rather than uh, improve his position. Okay, knight e5. Kassen understands that he has to be quick, otherwise this pawn will be weak. And this must be true because it rhymes. And now black has a choice to capture or to go knight f6. Did he play already? Let's see. No. Okay. So here. What can I say? Knight f6 looks a little bit too ambitious. Because this knight on e5 will be very strong. But then again, you want to put the knight on d5 and it's, it will also be quite strong. However, white has this idea of going king h2 and maybe later f4, f5. Okay, so it, it's not so clear. Anyway, black played rook ac8. Finally developing the last piece. Should be a good move. Should be close to equal. I'm not sure if black has a threat. But uh, white is the one who's obligated to prove why he's better. And he probably isn't. So... I wouldn't be worried if I was in Carson's place. Sorry, in Yakovenko's place. But uh, here I don't have a clear choice of, of color. Probably I would choose white, but it, I still think it's not easy to win. So. Okay, so Rook d2 as you can see rook 95 queen e5 and rook d7 was played and now well this should be a draw relatively soon rook fd1 rook cd8 or something maybe just leaving it like this playing something like h6 or rook c6 and waiting probably rook c6 is the most active way 
to play yeah rook fd1 on the board on both boards uh, i don't see a way for white to to really make progress if he, this pawn was on the h file maybe you could try h4 and h5 and g4 and create a second weakness but with the pawns double like this it's not easy so the only plan for Carlsen is to go g4 g5 but yeah it looks quite harmless to me because for example after g4 black can do something like rook c6 and already you cannot go g5 because d6 will be hanging so yeah i predict this will be a draw sooner or later in the meantime i'll check if my facebook and other social media ideas uh, you know activity before the stream brought some fruit okay some fruit some fruit is uh, are taking place I don't see anything that white can do and he's, he's played the g4 and now from queen d8 nice move he wants queen f6 or queen g5 and prevents g5 although it wasn't a real threat after rook c6 but queen e4 queen g5 so the queen is active on g5 the rook like black takes has control of the open c file well it shouldn't be worrisome looks very very equal Equalish, as Swidler might say on chess 24. So, yeah, the game is not very intriguing so far. And just like yesterday, I did not prepare myself too well in terms of food. So, I will start whining from around 10 minutes uh, from now. And uh, until the end of the stream, about being hungry and uh, the first world problems, etc. So, forgive me in advance. Rook c2 is a decent move. Probably black can take. And now I'm considering this weird looking queen takes g4 because it attacks the rook. So, if you go queen c8 check, king h7 take, I can take here with perpetual check, I think. It looks a little bit risky, but. There should be an easy perpetual. So, and if you don't take my rook and you play something like this, then you're probably winning. <laughs> Which I missed it. Hmm. Yeah, this is just lost. <laughs> or is it? Wait. Let's see if I... It's probably lost. But there's no reason to resort to such actions. Queen g4 is not the way. So, hmm. Carlsen is putting some pressure on Yakovenko with this g4 idea. Somehow he loomed the, lured the queen from b6, the active b6 square to this weird g looking g5 square and allowed rook c2. I would highly encourage and a Kovenko to play rook c6 here instead but maybe still then he will go some rook c2 related ideas like rook d3 rook c3 but uh, this time i have the luft on h7 so i can take with this rook anyway i think like Yakovenko went wrong somehow and now he has to make up for it by being precise you shouldn't be needing to play precisely in such uh, to play so so precisely in in, in such uh, such a, a solid position that's not better for your opponent, but it's part of the psychological effect. So he did play the line I mentioned, and now when queen takes g four, 
So if it's a draw, then it's a draw, but maybe it's not. Queen c8, king h7, we can expect f3 to be played. Maybe there is a key move which I have missed. He did not play f3. Okay, we have to analyze this position. Queen c5. Now, if king h1, I go queen h5, it repeats the position. If here, I'll just go here, there. Just You have to go to f2 eventually, and I go check. Eventually, you'll go to f1, or e2, or e1. If you go to e1... So these are the three squares that I need to check out. If you go here... I'll go here once again you have to repeat the position or go to e1 so these are the two independent options if king e1 i'll probably go queen to c3 if king e2 queen c4 oh actually maybe i just go queen e5 and then king f1 is winning so queen c3 hmm. This looks like the right way. If king e2, queen c4. So you have to block with the rook eventually. Then I just go from check here. If you go back, I go queen c3. If you go to e2, I'll go queen c4. Eventually, you have to go rook d3 in this position. King d1 is just a perpetual. Queen f1, queen c4, queen b4. I can take the rook eventually. Here also queen b4. It's a bit complicated, but it should be a perpetual. But, okay, king f2 and king e3... Okay, it's really difficult to calculate, but it feels like it should be a draw. Here you have to go back. So, um, king e3 allows king queen c5. I don't see a win. Queen c3 also is good enough. Rook d3, queen e5, king f2. Probably king e3, I'll just go from c5. <coughs> so, I'll keep checking you on the diagonal. I think it should be a draw, but maybe I'm wrong. So the position on the board is queen c4. I think Kassen is forced to go king e1 eventually if he wants to try to win. And now give a check, and give a check, and give a check. And now... What? Wow. Kassen played rook d3. Wow. What an interesting move. It shouldn't be winning, but... Or did he? Did he play rook d3? I don't know. I saw the move appearing on the board and suddenly it disappeared. So maybe it was a mistake. Anyway, rook d3 is funny because it's probably still a draw giving up a whole rook. I just keep giving checks and it's an easy draw. This is an easy perpetual. Just go to h4 or to d1 or to d or to d2 forever. g5 also is a square if you go to g3. So this is an easy perpetual, but black cannot win because this d6 pawn is too strong. So rook d3 is probably still a draw, but king e1 is what I expect Carson to play. And now queen c3, and this is the critical line, and now there's a very important question whether or not white can escape the checks. I mean, if he could give the rook and get his king to b6, it should be winning, so he should try. And Yakovenko clearly plays for a draw, judging by his choice of uh, like giving the rook and trying to give a perpetual rather than playing a position, which he might have been better, who knows? So, right now, So, I don't see a move, but <coughs> maybe there is a problem. <sighs> okay, I think I made up my mind. This time I will not repeat the same mistake. This time. 
I'm going to do something about my hunger. So this is right about the moment where I'm supposed to start whining, complaining, but I won't. I will order something to eat. And in between the rounds, I will go out and get it and be back in three minutes. And uh, those of you who will not like it will probably be right. But I'll still... Uh, I'll still... Uh, do it because otherwise you pro you will suffer even more if I'll just complain the entire two and a half three hours. Uh, I apologize for the distraction, but I need to search for the number. And uh, well, this round did not finish yet, but I'm waiting for some update on the moves. <coughs> I keep my eyes in the chat in case anyone sees a move or a result. Okay, so I'm gonna make the call. And since I'm probably gonna talk in Hebrew, it's a good idea to mute my microphone. And uh, while I'm muting the microphone, I will leave the camera so you can probably read my lips. This would be very, very fun for you, for sure. Okay, so. Order has been made. Great stuff. Someone recommends sushi, but I mean, it will take some time. And I, I ordered a sandwich. And at the risk of everyone talking about it until the end of the stream and ignoring the chess, which I hardly urge you not to do, but it's a vegan sandwich. So let us focus on the chess why is nothing happening okay king e1 okay we have some moves queen c3 check rook d2 queen b4 what what, <laughs> what just happened okay some stream issues okay let's look at it slowly rook d3 queen c2 rook queen c4 queen f1 queen c4 queen b4 queen c5 queen g1 Taking all the pawns and white is escaping somehow. So maybe now white is suddenly okay, winning? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe there was a perpetual chess check going on, maybe there wasn't. But now the, the king will be safe on b6 and the pawn will promote. So if Carson ends up winning this position, it will be really impressive. And I'm sure there was a perpetual check at least uh, somewhere along the line but maybe there wasn't <laughs> maybe there actually it's more likely there wasn't because there was a rook to give up at any moment <laughs> but Carson found found a way through <laughs> so queen takes a2 was played but wow this is interesting i hope so by the time this game ends i will just go out immediately to to get my food and, uh, well, how can I, I'll probably give an exercise to the viewers while I'm leaving for a moment. Hmm. But I would like to give an exercise from this tournament, so nothing else. Not an exercise that's just well known and famous. 
So I'll, I'll search for it now while they're playing. <coughs> Okay, so we see some moves, b4 on the board, d7, Kassin will get the queen, but Yakovenko will get his pawn all the way to b2 in the meantime, and he might be giving him some chances, I don't know. He probably will, but it might also just be lost, because the pawn can be stopped, perhaps. So, we'll see what happens. But, uh, wow. What's going on in this? Okay, excuse me for not focusing for a moment. <coughs> but Patsulaya is probably beating Nakamura with black, which is quite incredible. We'll look at it if we'll have the time. Wow, and to think that I had a winning position against Pansulaya not so long ago. Okay. Okay, I think I found an interesting exercise. And excuse me, if I'll just mention that I turned in that particular game between Akamura and Pansulaya, I did turn the engine on just to see if there was a position when someone blundered, and there was, just to, to find uh, which position to give you as an exercise. So, I admit it, I turned it on uh, for a few moves here, on move number 39, to find an exercise for the viewers. But please forgive me. It's just so that I can eat. <laughs> And Yakovenko resigned. Okay, so I will put the exercise on the board and uh, go out for a moment. So, and then I'll move to the interesting games. But what a win by Carlsen. What a fantastic win. He found, he managed to, I'm not sure how to say it in English once again, but to to squeeze water out of, of out of a rock. So... Pansulaya versus Nakamura. Let's see, the game is right here. He's already won. Move number 39. Okay, I'll press it like this. Okay, so to avoid the risk of showing you the game continuation, I'll quickly run through the moves. And when I reach the right position, I will avoid showing it. And this way you won't see the solution. So... Hopefully, <laughs> because he did find it in the game. So, this is the position from the game. Yes, and now Nakamura blundered. He played this move rook from e2 to e5, and now black to play and win. Please take your time thinking about it. I will leave everything here, including the camera, so everyone can see my lovely apartment while I'm gone. And I'm getting the food. Okay. Good stuff. By the way, I'll, I'll be eating the food while probably looking at the other games, but we'll probably still be waiting for the next round. So, this is good stuff. While trying to understand 
this combination, which I know the solution, but I really don't understand everything, all the details yet.
Welcome back. Here's my food. Okay. Let's see what we have by now. Need to. Oh, it's cold outside. So, anything new is taking place? Oh, the next round will start very soon, but no pairings. Okay, so I will reveal the solution and try to understand it myself. But for now, let us eat. I'm not sure if you still want to see me eating or not by this point in our unique relationship as a streamer and a viewer. But I will leave the camera on until someone complains. Haven't got com any complaints yet. <laughs> I've been the only one who's been complaining, <laughs> you know, on this channel so far. <sighs> yes. Why didn't I do it yesterday? Wow. Such a brilliant idea to get food while being hungry. Okay, so I'll even show you what it is. So it's a sandwich with a bunch of things, but basically it's meatballs that are made out of lentils. So yeah, someone smart m might have said in the past, fuck yeah. So. Now let's look at the position. So I will reveal the solution now, after all this long wait. It's Rook B takes C6. I'm not sure if people offered it or not. I've seen some action in the chat that someone might have been offering some moves, but I wasn't here to read it. Okay, the point is probably that if you take I'll take here. If you take with the knight, eventually I have queen d5 check taking the rook. Fairly simple. And then Nakamura resorted to taking this knight, aiming to take the rook next probably. And play this position exchange down. But this was not enough for Pansulaya. He just played rook c8 <coughs> and only then took and a rook h5. Oh, and he's a rook down. Okay, not much is going on with the rook down and this and the king that's very unsafe. He got mated. Okay, Pansulaya is gaining 36 rating points. So from 26-22 will be like 26-60 almost. It's nice. Okay, not pair, we don't have any pairings yet. <coughs> so let's go first look at the leaders. Krishuk versus Aronian, which ended in a draw. And then... Is this the game I said I would look at? I said Aronian, Mohamed Yarov. I don't understand. Was it the previous round? <coughs> Why do I see? Oh, whoops! Yeah, yeah. Gushuk and Aronian is not the move the, from this round. Yeah. Okay, so this is the game. Aronian is one of the leaders. Korobov is the second leader. Aronian lost to Mamedyarov. Korobov drew with Ivanchuk. So many. People with 6 out of 8 now, but only Mamedyarov and Korobov leading the event with 6.5 out of 8. So let's look at this game. There is supposedly a very interesting sacrifice somewhere later. So I will eat and uh, put the moves for you.
Rook takes e6 is a nice move. At least it's nice looking, but Queen takes d4 is even nicer. Yeah, now black is just okay. White has some compensation, but black is an exchange up. Now right, he wants to make a draw, and he doesn't. <coughs> white is fighting oh king g8 wow just resign so many strong players are losing with white in this event great game by Mediaro Let's look at Korobov. Oh, it's not the right one once again. Oh, sorry, you didn't see the 8th rank once again. <laughs> uh, I'll, eventually I will be able to fix it. I'll, I'll be professional enough. So, here, as usual, this looks good. Watching me eat is great. The, and it's funny that the more I eat during the streams and less focus on chess, the more viewers in, like watching. I don't know if they enjoy it as much, but this is my new hobby, to eat in front of as many people as possible. <laughs> okay, so I'll put the moves. Maybe it was wiser to turn the camera off like I did with the Mandarin earlier, but I don't care. I'm not here to be wise. I'm here to become wiser. So by behaving like this, I have much more becoming wiser to do. F4 was amazing by Korobo. Mm -hmm. Great. Just made a draw. Other good games? Yeah, make everyone feel hungry now. Let's look at Vashie with white against Yuyan Gi.
וואו. You and Geek completely outplayed him. I want to look at it again. Something here went terribly wrong for Vashia and I can't say exactly what. <clears throat> I don't know, this line is supposed to be good for white. Maybe queen d2 is the most precise move here and queen e1 was a mistake. Yeah. Because now, now the knight has no squares, and now black is is better. The king h1 was probably another mistake, missing knight h5 and bishop h4. We should probably avoid giving the exchange like this, and be a little bit less ambitious. Alright, let's look at another game. Okay, I, did, I saw it until the end, right? No, the end was not that important, it was an exchange down for nothing. Okay, Okopian with white losing to Nipomnishi. Let's look at if the next round has started by now. They don't even have pairings here where I'm looking. By the way, this was less than half of my meal, in case you think it's already behind you. The torturing. Less than half. Still have some things. Some salad, which is very important, right? The green things and so on. And another piece. This was only half a sandwich. So. <clears throat> I can't complain. I could. I had a lot of reasons. Okay, at least one. To complain earlier but now not anymore now I'm a very happy camper so what should I do look at this game but you know what I think I tortured you enough I didn't see a single person complaining by the way about the food I didn't see anyone complaining, but I will be polite and you'll just hear me eating now. So the second half of my meal, I will just show the moves. So for all of those who wanted to see me eating got their chance. But there's always the archived version, of course. And now we'll see this game <coughs> as I'm eating <coughs> the second half. I do feel comfortable sharing it with the world, but I just feel like if I did, don't try both options, I don't know what people will prefer more. You need to experience both, only hearing and also seeing me. <laughs> it's funny, I heard some people telling me that it's not professional that I'm singing sometimes. I wish if those people, I not wish, I, I wonder what happens if this particular individuals are watching me now as I'm eating probably something they've never seen before in a chess event live stream but I'm here to break some some of the what do you call it some of the common uh, courtesy I don't know encourage people to think out of the box and part of my way is being a role model of behaving out, out of the box. How lovely. So, let's continue this game. Do we have pairings? 
for the next round. Okay, we have some pairings. Grishuk with White versus Carlsen. <coughs> By the time it starts, we will look at this particular game. And uh, I will finish my meal. My happy meal. Well, to be honest, the main reason I'm not showing this part of the meal is because I don't want my parents to see that I'm not eating the vegetables. And here a copy unresigned. <coughs> Is anyone offended yet? I'm not trying, but I'm just wondering. Well, someone is saying that by now that I'm saying out loud, they're going to know anyway. Well, they won't if you don't tell them. And there's no proof. Mr. Zeperim.
Well, I heard a rumor about the YouTube algorithm that dislikes can generate more views. So those those who think that they by putting dislikes they harm anyone, and if if they end up just benefiting them, it's I, I find it hilarious. That's my response to someone saying in the chat that he will take back his dislike if I stop eating. And then asking me to eat a banana. Could you please show the game? Yes, I will, once the game is started. I'm waiting for it to start. Hmm. Christopher Cruz. I feel hungry also now, and it's 12 a.m. here in Philippines. Oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't take this the time difference into account. I thought everyone had is in the evening and might be encouraged to eat something healthy. Okay, okay, I'll go back. People miss me already. I'm still here, still eating. A little bit left. Life is still great. And, uh, well... This is probably the best decision I've ever made in the entirety of my streaming career. Going out and getting food while streaming. And now I understand why all these big uh, streamers, they take these short 10 minute breaks and have this music with some position. I thought that they just go to the bathroom or something. No, they're hungry as shit. What are we eating? I mentioned already. There is some salsa sauce. Some... Uh, Lentils based meatballs and uh, some green some vegetables inside the bread. Simple as that. So I'm feeling great. Ready for the next two rounds. And I'll be focusing on chess. And we have some moves. What a great timing. You see, I already have a lot of... You can see the happiness on my face. You can see the joy in my eyes. To, see, to look at the chess pieces moving rather than being grumpy. Even though this opening is not so interesting in my opinion. I'm still happy. You see? That's all it takes. I was never so happy to see an isolated pawn. For Carlson... Wow, well, it's Grishuk with white. Carlson plays it with black? Wow.
Okay. So far we are following the mainline of this variation. If any Hebrew speakers are wondering where is the place where I was eating, this is the one. <laughs> Please sponsor me. <coughs> Being sick was never so fun. <coughs> I got it from a restaurant. That's right. I'm doing videos for free and I don't spend any money. No, and I spend money on food while doing it. That's how badass I am. <laughs> Was this a Panov? No. This is not a Panov. This is called a Slav with E6, I guess. Let me just show quickly. So, this is one of the main positions of the Slav defense, it's called the classical Slav. And now a4 is the main move, and now normally they play bishop f5, but e6 is one of the main attempts for equality, going for these isolated pawn positions. And Black argues that this, compared to the normal Queen's Gambit accepted here, which is relatively annoying for Black, even though it's also interesting, this pawn on a4 is more of a... Let's call it a compromise than uh, some than a let's call it a perk. It's just a compromise because now the black has the b4 square forever, and he doesn't have any a3 b4 ideas. And this pawn, like it's a little bit of a weakness, weakening the light, the dark squares and so on. So Carlsen follows the main line. Right before bishop g5 h6. This is considered okay for black. I'm curious how it will develop. Yeah, and he's already down on time. Which is not a big surprise. <coughs> the only one who was leading on time against Carlsen uh, in, in a very convincing way was Ivanchuk. Which just stresses out what a, a tremendously strong player he is. And I'll repeat what I said yesterday. I wish Ivanchuk will put will input all of his time into chess and chess related research and not spend any of it on other interests that he has and he has many some of which are checkers poetry and probably uh, russian uh, literature so <clears throat> wow I feel so great for for almost no reason. So two different people in the chat at the same moment more or less says that they say that they appreciate my effort and thank me for streaming. Uh, it's very nice to, to see uh, and it feels good to be appreciated, thank you. However, I do it for selfish reasons. I just enjoy watching the games and people watching them with me makes me feel uh, like I have a company while watching. So it's nice for me also. I don't feel like I'm putting any extra efforts compared to watching uh, on my own and trying to improve. So, if anything, I put probably less efforts because I'm talking so much rather than thinking. So, position is relatively normal. The bishop normally goes from d7 to c6. And, uh, well, I don't really understand it very much. So, I hope the viewers will excuse me if I don't say anything wise about this particular moment. Other than that black should be very solid, if not completely fine by now
95. So, just to make it clear about uh, the compliments that I received earlier, there is no need to thank me for streaming. If anything, I should thank you for choosing to watch me, because uh, it's not obvious that it's interesting to anyone. So, thank you, whoever is watching, either now or in the archived version. And uh, I think that in the same sense, we, sh we don't have to thank Carson or Grishuk for playing. They should be feeling grateful for us being willing to admire them and watch their play and acknowledge them as the best players in the world in an activity that we all find interesting and, uh, and inspiring. Despite the choice of opening. <laughs> so. <coughs> and, uh, yeah. And also the fact that I'm sick doesn't make it harder. It makes it more easy to, to watch the games. Because there is nothing better to do. I don't have energy to go out and run or do sports or whatever. Or meet anyone because they'll probably infect them. So, <laughs> okay, someone is saying, the what's your name? T Tuber Gang. Okay. T Tuber Gang is saying this opening inspires me, and I'm considering putting you on timeout just because you said it. You are not allowed to be inspired by this opening. It's like the 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 one D four version of the Berlin equivalent of the Berlin. It's just so solid and uneventful. So I will. Uh, I will choose to do something that is against my regular habits, but I really find this game uninspiring, even though all the pieces are on the board and it's a typical isolated pot. I feel like we want to, on, the to on top of being educated, we want to uh, at least have a little bit of entertainment. And I mean high quality entertainment, not just funny jokes and everything and some sounds. So I have in mind one of the last boards game that uh, is very interesting, much more interesting than the one in front of us. Board number 22. So Kwaparadze versus Karyakin. Karyakin does not have the tournament of his life so far he has 50 percent after eight rounds being one of the top seeds it's not uh and of course the world champion uh i don't know how to call it the world champion uh, the vice world champion or the world champion challenger so one of the top players in the world just have a look at this position we'll have a quick look at how they reached it and we'll follow this game in the meantime and hopefully the people will enjoy. <coughs> so. I'll just... One moment. Alright, so I'm accessing the game from the other side just to see if we have the same position since they haven't moved in a while. So 
So it's the same position. Kwaparadze, Giga versus Karyakin Sergei. So going back to the opening, you know what, I'll go back in a moment, just look at this position while I'm verifying that I understand what happened in the opening by looking at the opening book. Okay, Karyak in place for a win with black, that's already nice, and now Okay, so from what I see, I'll just quickly show the viewers. It's a very typical Keras attack, <laughs> but arising from the Nidorf. So h3, and now Karyakin probably didn't want to to get uh, the logical, uh, not the logical, the popular main lines. He wanted to surprise his opponent, so he played knight c6, and now they get this type of position. So white lost the pawn, on, uh, not the pawn, uh, tempo on h3. But he will regain the tempo probably on bishop e3. But okay, but he wasted it on knight b3. So you get the normal Keras attack, tempo down, uh, which is considered to be dangerous for black as well. Queen on e2 is a logical place to put it, and now knight d5. This is the key moment of the game. And uh, well, probably it's not better for white because uh, even in the regular Keras attack, you don't play like this. And with the tempo down, shouldn't shouldn't be winning by any means, but maybe it's just very complicated. So you have to take it more or less. Now you play like this if you don't want to allow f4. So just have a quick look. They have some update in the actual game. So after knight e7. So knight, takes, knight to e7 is a very interesting move because knight e5, f4, although there is bishop d5, maybe, but there is no time to analyze. So, okay, we'll focus on what happened here. So knight e7, long castle, long castle, yeah. Rook h4, knight d5, rook d5, bishop d5, rook b4. Wow, what a lovely situation. And he has play the move number 21 queen takes b7 we don't see it here on chess 24 so let me just show the viewers queen takes a6 you cannot take the queen because bishop a6 but d5 and now he played rook takes b7 queen takes b7 a very interesting uh, situation has arose and uh, I'm not sure how to evaluate it it feels it's incredibly unbalanced. Still no move. And suddenly we have queen a5 on this website. Okay. So. Karyakin is a well known world class defender. And Kwaparadze is a relatively unknown GM. Uh, even an IM. Wow. It's not a GM yet. Okay, he's, I think his feeder rating is around 2500, but his rapid rating is incredibly high for some reason. I wonder why. I wonder how it happens, because rapid feels almost the same like classical chess, so... Maybe he actually is worth 2600 level in classical chess, but it takes more time to, to actually gain rating and progress, or... Maybe it's just some people are just stronger in rapid than classical, which puzzles me. Usually, those who are strong in in rapid should be very strong uh, in classical as well. And uh, the only thing that's not necessarily correlating is blitz and and uh, the rest of them. <coughs> <coughs> and by the way. When someone is very strong in classical, but even stronger in blitz, it usually means, at least in my understanding, 
that they have even more potential in, in classical because uh, the fact that they are stronger in blitz means that uh, if they make some adjustments to their chess they can uh, jump to the next level because blitz and uh, even bullet in some cases indicates a player's intuition and by having a stronger intuition than their rating it means that they can work on it, whatever just openings or uh, calculation or whatever and and then reach the next level but it doesn't work the other way around because if someone doesn't have a very strong intuition then it can be very difficult to develop and improve <laughs> so i hope you learned something from what i've just said or at least uh, it might have encouraged you to develop your own opinion on the topic and let's focus on the game some pieces are hanging so bishop b4 i actually consider this move knight b8 to avoid bishop a6 and then only later bishop b4 but this makes sense it's more active and now king c7 why not knight b8 now bishop h3 already <laughs> it was also possible earlier probably he wasn't happy with bishop h3 here <coughs> But then rook d7, <coughs> and there is no reason for black to be afraid. Is the rook up? Ah, no. What? Is a rook and an exchange up? Four, two pawns. So there is no reason to be afraid. If you exchange these, you'll be a rook up for two pawns. So knight b8 feels good, but for some reason he goes for this one. And now I'm curious what will happen. With the board, yeah? With my nose, we all know what will happen. We'll keep on being like this forever. So, the position is incredibly interesting. I, I want to calculate. Bishop f4 check. You have both bishop d6 and king b6. Ah, but king b6 I have queen takes b4. So, this move, bishop f4, forces bishop back to d6. And he didn't even go for it because probably there is no follow-up. So knight d4 makes more sense. You want to play bishop e4 check now. This is a lethal threat because after bishop e4 now, you simply have no moves. If king b6, I have queen takes b4. If king c8, I have bishop a6. And if bishop d6, I have knight b5 check. So now knight d4 introduces a very, very powerful threat. And, well... Black has to defend, and uh, honestly, it's not a pleasant task. Another threat, by the way, that I didn't mention is knight b5 check, cutting the queen from the bishop, aiming to take on b4 next. So, and if I get a full piece, then I will have two pieces and two pawns for two rooks, which is almost enough compensation, especially with this king. So, uh, you don't want to lose any material here as black. It's a general thing in, in chess, but now, despite being like 7 points up, if you if you lose no 5 points up uh, by the traditional numbers, 2 rooks are 10 points versus 5, which is a piece and 2 pawns. So you can't afford to lose any more material because white already has compensation now. Maybe not enough, but we'll see. And I find it unpleasant to search for a defense in in, in uh, complicated positions where someone is attacking me, even if I'm objectively better. So in this particular moment, I will let Karyakin do the work for me. And uh, I want to focus and pretend that I'm playing on the white side. <coughs> and I hope that the viewers will forgive me. Someone is saying that Giga won. Hmm. 
Someone was saying in the chat something funny. Please show us the Carlson. <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh, but I guess some of you can relate. Show us the Carlson. The Carlson. Okay. I will not. It was his choice to play this boring opening. It was Grishuk's choice to enter it. I will not show you this uh, game. I will show you this particular one. Queen a4 was played, king c7, knight d4, rook a8, and he allowed him to get the piece. Which means that probably uh, Koryakin is not very confident in his chances. So, let me see. What a lovely position so I see some moves on the other side rook takes a2 king b1 rook a6 was played oh, I wonder how it will feel for the other streamers who probably don't even look at this game but to watch it with the computer and just spit out some lines as if they are brilliant but I like what Gelfand said in our stream together on round 11 of the world championship uh, that once you look at the position with an engine, especially while streaming, you're no longer a person. You become a puppet that just activates the computer. A puppet for the engine. And it doesn't matter if it's Widler or Gustafsson or me or a 1300 or a monkey sitting there. They will still spit out the same lines and still use their hands to praise the space bar or the, the, the mouse and... I find it uh, irritating that the strong players are willing to reduce themselves to puppets and also prevent themselves from learning in, on behalf of, uh, of uh, let's say, preventing embarrassment yeah, because God forbid they might miss a variation and, uh, or, or, or just suggest a bad move. And the viewers have the engine, so they will know immediately that they are humans. So, back to the game. This feels good, actually, to rant about things. So, queen c3, as you can see. Now, rook e8 was played. Knight d4, and now rook to b6. Karyakin has a chance to show us his powerful, his very powerful defensive skills and by the way uh, it's very difficult to evaluate we're just watching it instead of coming up with some moves <laughs> oh, my nose is killing me man I don't feel like a person I feel like a nose with a person floating around it around it so <clears throat> so in this position rook b6 was played so what did I miss? Yeah, it's the same position exactly. So no updates. Knight f5 was played. Okay. Quaparadze played knight f5. Attacking the rook and attacking g7. And Karyakin needs to find that, come up with uh, a good resource for defense. If Quaparadze will take the exchange, it will be equal material. Ah, but, but he lost a pawn on a2. Okay, so now he is three points behind, just to make it clear. So if he loses an exchange, he's still uh, technically one point ahead. Uh, so knight f5. But still, white is not in such a rush, a rush to take the rook. He wants to attack the king. The king on d8 is fairly open. And, uh, well, if I had to choose, I'm not sure which color I would choose here. Probably it's more fun to play with white, even if he's... 
how objectively worse, which I'm not sure anymore. It probably was earlier, but because this 95 sacrifice is not justified, but I'm very glad he played it. It saved me from the chaos in game. So let's see. So yeah, Carlson. I'm just looking in the other monitor at Carlson's game. It's more or less the same. All the pieces are on the board, more or less, in the same type of position. But this one, oh man, we have some updates. D4, Queen takes D4, Rook E4. Karyakin is doing what he did against Kassen. He, he doesn't like having pawns that block his position. He gives them up. And now goes Rook E4. He wants activity. Rook B4 next. He doesn't care. He doesn't care anymore. He just wants to get activity. Karyakin is very resourceful. And by the way, by the time this game ends, we will go back to, to the Kassen game. I have a feeling this this game will end sooner with someone losing the the Karyakin game. I mean, oh my God, I lose the ability to say the the letter B. I win the letter M. Yeah, instead of M, I sound like B. This is what I mean. Oh, yeah, I'm losing it. So rookie four. Karyakin played knight, no, Kwaparadze played knight d6, which I missed actually. Knight takes b7 is a great idea. Rook takes d4. And now it's already material equality, but white is slightly better, yeah? Because now this position, the pawn on g7 is hanging, two bishops and two passed pawns. So suddenly Karyakin is worse. If he loses this game, he'll be on minus one out of nine rounds. Being 2800. It's not a common thing to have minus one out of nine rounds. And it's not even against the top players of the world. It's just some a bunch of 2600s. Wow. Not a pleasant sight. G6, HG, HG. And now probably Quaparadze will use the time to push the pawns. Use the tempo. I like more the idea of playing H6 and having a potential passed pawn here. But uh, maybe a tempo is more valuable. Bishop c4, king e7 was played, but we'll see it soon. Unfortunately for you, dear viewers, I will take a very short break, as usual. So, one moment. <clears throat> so here, let us... I'll encourage you to focus on the position and I will put a little bit of music. So I'll try. Hopefully it will be good. Blow your nose. No, I won't. I will only do it if I need to. Not for your entertainment. What is this sound? Just enjoy. While you're watching this end game, which I find fascinating, but I'll be back soon.
Welcome back. Myself. So the end game is taking make we have some progress. It's not too relevant for the tournament situation. I wonder if anyone likes or dislikes the music. I'll leave it for a few minutes. reading the chat but uh, I'm not too sure what the people are saying People here are insane. <laughs> How do you... There's one guy here who knew exactly which type of music I put. How, how did you figure it out? I don't know. I mentioned your name. Enrique R. How did you know which music it is? And I'm not talking about the about this particular genre, but just part knowing what what I was searching. <laughs> Shazam was it Shazam? Oh my god! I tried Shazam, but it didn't work for me quite well. I don't know. It just doesn't recognize anything. So. So basically, I uh, wrote public domain classical music on YouTube, so uh, that I won't have any trouble. Because last time I put some music from, well, from well-known clips, and I received a warning on my channel because, God forbid, three minutes of music of music from from a from a well-known artist uh, while I take a break is already will probably cause them to. To go out of business and by the way I don't even gain money from this from this particular like from these uh, streams or these videos I probably earn like one or two cents I don't even care so it probably will provide some percentage of the food but still yeah exactly he was right about the copyright. Public domain, by the way, for those who don't know, it's when uh, something is allowed to use, be used for free uh, in public, uh, in general in public, yeah? Even for commercial use in a way. Not that there's anything commercial about whatever it is that I'm doing, but YouTube don't doesn't care. They like restricting Whoever wants to have fun. Feels like school. So, someone is asking me how do you make a living? Oh, it's not, it's not a great question for this end game because, well, we have to, to learn. We don't have to make a living now. All we have to do is learn. So, Quaparadze has the pair of Bish. And uh, two past pawns, and he tries to progress, to make progress with the pawns. Let's see if I can put my hands on the castle game. I don't know why it makes this sound whenever, whenever I log in. So. 
cool. Okay, whatever. A look at the custom game. Oh, I received. Okay, so after this game, I have another lovely end game to show the viewers before I go back to Carlson. Uh, to Carlson's game, which is probably the most, in, for to me, is the most inspiring. Watch all Carlson's games, and of course the leaders. In this round, I took a small break from logical decisions. Just following the interesting things rather than the most uh, relevant to the tournament situation. Of course, tomorrow I won't do it because uh, I don't have the luxury because uh, it will decide. I mean, the results will decide the lead, the winner of the tournament. So I better focus on the top boards. Okay, so let me see one thing. Can I change something? No. doesn't seem to work oh man there's no way around it okay so <coughs> so this end game rook on f5 is white going to win or not i have no idea but we have to we have to think of something Okay, so okay, I think Carlson has an advantage against Grishuk, but we'll look at it later. It's a very interesting game, but maybe to watch afterwards and not necessarily during the game and wait for them to make moves in a relatively solid position. Uh, Mamediarov beat Aronian, so he is leading. No, it was not now, it was an earlier round, sorry. So now, round number 9. Do we already... Uh-huh. Mamediaro versus Korobo. Ivanchuk has managed to win against Pansulaya with black, which we will also probably look at. Hope we'll have the time for everything. So Ivanchuk is leading with 7 out of 9 right now. And uh, behind him there is Korobo and Mamediaro with 6.5 out of 8. So. And they're playing against each other. So this is probably the most relevant game for the tournament situation, but I don't know, I'm very curious about this ending that we have in front of us. So... So what can we do? Bishop h3 will result in an immediate draw. Why? Bishop h3, King c6, Bishop f4, maybe King e6. I need to understand. Bishop h3, King c6. You can take on d6 also. Ah, oh, but there's Rook f3. So we need to take on f5. Takes. There's no way to make progress. I agree. It's probably an immediate draw. If you go bishop h3. And if you don't, it's not easy to make progress. So, 
the game between Rajabov and Bortnik is highly interesting. I'll have a look at it after this game is finished. Every game we have this highly interesting exchange sacrifices. We'll look at round and uh, then board number ten afterwards. Hmm. What a game! Okay, so. Game number 10, starting from move number 10. So this looks like an easy draw. For Karyakin, the knight will never run out of squares, he will go to c6. And always he'll have either a5 or b8 at his disposal. So I think we can move on, we are lacking time. I hope the viewers agree with me that this is an easy draw. And if don't, feel free to check this position on your own. Uh, round number 10. Board number 10 and then we'll look at the leaders and Carlsen and everyone So move number 10. So look at this position Bortnik with the black pieces played a move bishop h6 and now Rajabov Made from this moment until the end of the game such a sequence that It will be a pity not to show it right now. I will I can't wait until the after the event so d5 queen c1 g4 queen h6 threatening knight g5 so you have to take 98 what a thunder felt like something bad happened 94 threatening knight g5 so you have to go f6 h4 h5 just ignoring and now oh what a lovely idea knight g5 fg Queen takes g5, and now after king f7, probably the combination of the tournament. Queen takes h5. And now it's all forced. Takes, bishop takes, you have to go back. Rook g1 check. Rook g7. Rook e7. Now if you go back to g8, I go rook g7 and rook g6. And it's an easy mate. So this is something sometimes referred to as a windmill. Because you can go like this, rook g7, rook b7. You don't have to, but just so you know why it's called a windmill. Because this is the same movement of going back and forth with the rook. Like a windmill does when it uh, when it's generated by the wind. So, instead, black played rook f6, trying to avoid the terrible fate. But now rook g7 again. And after king f8, rook h7, you cannot prevent rook h8 with the mate. So, a fantastic game by Rajabov against uh, the Ukrainian young player uh, Alexander Bortnik, I believe the current European champion under 18 or at least one year ago. And uh, he has several other titles, if I'm not wrong. So, not sure if he's European or, or world champion under 18, but either way, uh, more than in his classical skills. His rapid and blitz, especially blitz skills, are beyond ridiculous. <coughs> Not so long ago, he, he won <coughs> an online blitz tournament with 9 out of 9, being the first guy in history to ever do so. So, yes, when he loses, it's not so obvious. Okay, so moving on, let's just make sure that Karyakin made a draw. As I was thinking, yes. Kassen beat Grishuk and Korobov lost to Mamedyarov. So Mamedyarov is leading. So let's look at these two games before the next round begins. Starting with the Mamedyarov game because he's the leader of the tournament. <coughs> and uh, 
So, mamy the Arrows game. So, Sergei defended like a beast. Very impressive as usual. Now mamy the Arrows. Again. Against his uh, shared leader, his fellow leader, Anton Korobov, and he plays a3, which is a relatively sharp line. Queen a4 check, cd5, g3. <coughs> so, seems like everything. And once again, Korobov enters this structure and does this g5, which he did against Grishuk. Seems like a common idea for him to go g5 and f5 in this particular line. But Mamediarov does not seem to be afraid of it. He just plays very solid and now sacrifices a pawn in order to take on b6. Seems like he has a nice grip on the dark squares. And his king is safer. I would say that white is better here. Yeah, and now, queen b8, bishop h5, if you take, then you lose, because queen f8, king g6, queen e8, king h6, bishop f8. So you have to go here, check, and takes, and this is probably game over. A matter of technique, but uh, with uh, such a passed b pawn, there are no, there are no real chances for black. And he resigned. Okay, a lovely game by Mamediarov. There wasn't much to see, but it just indicates of what a powerful play he demonstrated. Shakhalia Mamediarov is the rightful leader so far. He keeps uh, demolishing every top player on his way. And he made it look easy in this game, at least from my angle. And uh, yeah. There's, it's not in vain that his rapid rating is 2800 and that his blitz rating is also very high. He's such a great aggressive player and calculates incredibly fast and has amazing intuition. So here in this game he showed why he's one of the best players when it comes to fast time controls. So let's go on to the grishuk Carlsen game. Because when Carlsen wins against Grishuk with black, it should be seen. Deserves to be seen. <laughs> Even though I I talked a little bit otherwise during the game, I just wanted to see all the interesting sacrifices that took place uh, instead of the middle game here. I'd like to watch moves rather than watching them think. So e3, c5, takes, 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 knight c6, castles. Okay, so far we saw it. These are the main moves, more or less. Bishop d2 I'm not familiar with, but around this point... Both players are playing all the very uh, common moves, rook c7, doubling on the c file, putting the bishop and queen on the right squares. So both players did what they are supposed to do in this line, queen e8, bishop b4. Black is probably slightly better already, <laughs> because white has the isolated pawn and he wasn't able to generate any anything uh, too concrete. And black continues to improve his position, knight c6. The more exchanges, the better it is for black. And now white decides to get rid of uh, having a, being the only one having a weakness. So he exchanges the bishop for a knight in order to have black with an isolated pawn as well. But in these type of structures, the player who has an advantage is the one who controls the, farther, the farthest file. Because it's far more far from the king in case of an endgame and so on. So the c-file is more important than the e-file, and also this pawn on a5 is quite weak. So why didn't even try to, to defend it? And now he, can, he doesn't have time to defend the b4 pawn properly, so he gave it up. And now two pawns versus one should be an advantage for black. All he needs to do is to blockade this pawn and start pushing the others, which he does. He blocks, puts the rook behind the pawn. Blocks once again and b4. And now he keeps 
pushing the pawn a5 and now he has a pawn up and it's a fairly simple task to convert and uh, Grishuk just resigned, he didn't even wait <laughs> a great game by Carlsen but not one that I would have liked to to sit and, and, and watch for 25 minutes watching it like this rapidly feels much better I'm feeling a little bit thirsty so wait one sec while I'm bringing oh one moment do we have the pairings for the last round of the day? Not yet. I don't see the pairings, so we might have time for another interesting game. And I'll get some water. Because I'm quite thirsty. Okay, Vanchuk beating Pansulaya with black is worth looking at. Since Ivanchuk is the second place, the clear second place in the tournament so far. So in a moment we will look at the game. But for now, I'll just show you this first few moves. Yes. And now feel free to evaluate this position in your mind. This pawn sacrifice. I will just grab the water. Well, I don't really have any water left, so I should should have bought a six pack earlier, but I have this, which is water, but it's from the tub, from the tap. It's not as bad as losing a pawn, but it should be fine. I don't like drinking cold water in the winter. It feels a bit weird. So, while I do, let us look at the pawn sacrifice. In this position. Put it over there, far from the computer. So, knight e4. Ivanchuk is black. He takes a pawn. d5. Is white's pawn sacrifice justified? I hardly think so. A4. What a nice move. Wants to play A3 probably. I wonder why he did, does not play A3. And allows B8. A3 feels like such a strong move. In this position. I don't know why. Looks so powerful to play like this. Anyway, he chose this move. Okay, Knight A4 is also quite strong. But this is much less convincing to me. Anyway. Pansulaya is struggling with the pawn down. And uh, his pieces are less active also. This king is a bit exposed compared to the g8 king. The king on g8. And now... Yeah, Ivanchuk is just... Improving his pieces without much resistance. We got another pawn. takes on g3, takes on h5, there's nothing left for white. Queen c7, knight f4, knight e3 and resigns, or is it mate? <laughs> it's not mate yet, but of course white has a four, four pawns down, and uh, well, he should have resigned much, much earlier, but let's just look at the variations. So, there are two legal moves. If this move, I'll probably mate you somehow. <laughs> okay, the first idea that comes to my mind is knight f1 check and then if you take I go rook g2, g5 and fg5 and mate. So it feels like it should be enough. Knight f1. If you go king h4 Probably I have more than one idea here. But uh, just something that comes to mind is g5 check. Essentially forcing rook g5. And now again, if you take with the queen, I go knight g6 check and I'm winning. So 
Knight f1 is one of the many ways to win. <laughs> it's, it makes me dizzy to just trying to come up with the most precise way, but Knight f1 I like. Okay. I think it, ma it makes the point quite clear. Knight f1. Uh, and that's why he resigned. Okay. And he's four pawns down without any <laughs> compensation other than <laughs> uh, an exposed king. So let's have a look if the next round has started. Not even pairings. As usual, with the last round of the day, they're gonna take their time before they draw the lots. And we're gonna take our time reading the chat. I don't feel like looking at more games on behalf of waiting for the pairings, unless there's an interesting game that you want to see. <coughs> so. Let's see. So Someone asks in the chat if my cold is getting better when Carlson wins. Maybe. Let's hope he wins the event and then see. I'll let you know. Have you ever been to Iceland, Tal? Well, actually, I haven't had the pleasure to, to visit Iceland yet. <laughs> so, we're all waiting for the next round to begin. There are not there aren't even pairings. I, I don't even know what to do anymore with this. Oh just as I speak about it. Aronian with white versus Carlsen. Is Carlsen back with the leaders? Six and a half, so one point behind Mamedyarov, half a point behind Ivanchuk. So but he's black against Aronian. It's not an easy task for him. Beating Aronian with black is almost as difficult as making a draw. <laughs> Probably a little bit more difficult, but yeah. Someone saying that blowing your nose like this make it even worse. I I disagree because I can't breathe otherwise. So I don't know. I don't think my situation is worse. Uh. <laughs> Someone wants to see Fisher versus Spassky, okay. You're probably not gonna get your wish come true. But we do have pairings. So Aronian on the top board versus Carlsen, let's have a look. And the other boards. Board 2, Ivanchuk with White versus Mamedyarov, probably the most critical game uh, from the tournament standing point of view. The leader versus uh, the one who's trailing him. And if Ivanchuk wins, he will be the only person with 8 out of 10. Uh, so, wow, seven and a half out of nine, that's an insane result. And he lost in the second round and beat everyone. <laughs> Lovely. He lost to Fresine, I remember this game. Let's have a look while we are waiting. He lost to Fresine. So... Wow, this was a lovely game. I remember this game exactly, where he sacrificed the pawn for the bishop pair and lost without much resistance. Fresine, this is how strong Fresine is, you see? He can casually beat a leader of a tournament with a, by, while making it look easy. h5, rook e1, and h6, with, almost without any resistance. Quintus d6 just completely demolished, steamrolled 
Mamed Yarov, and now he had one out of two, similar to Carson, who had half out of two, both played less than perfect, and one out of two, then he made six and a half out of the next seven rounds. Three wins, one draw with Li Chao, and three additional wins. Not bad, Mamed Yarov. Let's see if he will continue the winning streak now on round number 10 against Ivanchuk. And we will see if any other players will follow through, like Aronian against Carson. Well, both have six uh, uh, and a half out of nine, but I think only, only Carson is the one who really thinks or or was really likely to win the tournament if you because okay if Aronian wins the game of course he has good chances but I think this is the critical moment for both of these players and Carson will try his best to win and a draw is a, 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 a disappointing result for both of them uh, by means of their chances tomorrow so <clears throat> let us wait for the final round Scroll up, Tal. I see some a lot of medical suggestions from the viewers. <sighs> a lot of medical advice. Breathe through your ears. <laughs> All right. Great advice, everyone. You need to see some doctor and get some medicine, my brother. That's another offer that I find interesting. Spread the Ebola. Well, I heard that now they have a vaccine that's uh, deemed effective, so maybe it's not as bad as it used to be. I don't care about all those who say that it's bad, that I'm blowing my nose. I don't care. I don't care. It's what I've been doing my entire life. And nothing bad happened. Yet. And uh, show the standings. That's a nice suggestion. I actually forgot about it. So, look at it. So, Mamedyarov Shachalyal with 7.5 out of 9. Vasily Ivanchuk with 7 out of 9. 6 and a half out of 9, we have 3 players. Actually, Carson is not among them. Carson is with... Oh, he is. I don't know. Ah, it's not updating because some games did not finish? What? So how did we have a pairing of the next round? I, don't, I, I choose to... To disbelieve. Anand versus you and Guy. Maybe it was a draw. So probably they have 6 and a half each. And it just didn't update. So, six out of eight. So, six and a half for so many players. Okay, not that many. Carson, Ipom, Nishi, Anand, Yuyan Gi, Korobov, Aronian, Li Chao. So, we have seven players with six and a half out of nine. And I think the most critical of them is the game Carson versus Aronian, which will decide uh, who is trailing the next leader of the game, Ivanchuk Mamediaro. So, is it going to start anytime soon? Because, uh, you know, I kind of have things to do. So much medical advice. Problem with your interface, hit F5. I 
hit F5 and it's still I can see no moves maybe the result Ah, the results updated, yeah, you're right. UNG has 6.5, Anand has 6.5, but it didn't change much because we still can't see any moves. Let's have a look on the other site. It makes this weird click sound where I enter. But hopefully this time it won't. So I honestly don't understand what I'm looking at. Because on the other side suddenly they don't even show this tournament. Or something is really wrong. Something is wrong with the site. So, anyway, I cannot see any moves. Feels just like yesterday, but. Fortunately now I'm not that hungry. Oh, I'm so happy that I'm not hungry as I was yesterday because now it's just... Wow. Feels like a completely different ball game. I can sit and wait, I can talk, I can... <laughs> Why classical music? What a weird question. Why not? Nobody complains so far. So... What music is in the background? Okay, I'll mention the exact title. Mozart, the magic flute, public domain. K620, whatever, overture. So, can I see the games? Nope. Nopity dopity. Okay. I don't have enough patience to... or Nor the time to wait here forever. But I will stick to the end. So I'll just take a short break until the game start. Hopefully by the time I'm back it will start. Actually, I'll leave the volume on, so you can hear the music.
the game has started, the final round. And I'm back. Everyone are back. So, the final round. What to say about the position? Aronian versus Carlson. You guys managed to watch it. <laughs> Reverse London. Okay, I'll start from the top because I didn't watch. So, Aronian plays one of his main lines and Carlson plays the London type of play against it. Bishop e3, Queen b3, and knight d4. So, both players are playing their main choice, I guess, here. And uh, Aronian is probably not going to risk much. Just a normal game. I don't think there's a high chance of him not knowing what he's doing. So... Just bishop g6 here, someone is saying, but he chose to take a knight c3. Let's see if on my other site I can see the games finally. <coughs> of course not. <coughs> Something is wrong. Okay, suddenly I see the game. Rook FD1, exactly. So... Okay, so everything seems to work so far. the one was played my nose is killing me my nose so Aronia is preparing an e4 break and Carson probably is not very well prepared for this position it's just my assumption and uh, judging by the fact that Aronian has more time than started and Carson does not. So, let's see. I really like Aronian's position. He probably studied this variation quite deeply. I remember he played it in the candidates, like uh, not this one, but the previous one, like two years ago. And uh, maybe it was Swidler who chose the move d takes c4 against him. Something. So this position, d takes c4 with some critical sharp variations, castles, b5 or something, I don't know, knight e5. I can't remember, queen d4, anyway, it was very sharp, very unbalanced, and now, oh, Carson chose a less principled response, but Aronian is prepared, nevertheless, all the same, so bishop d6 is probably an attempt for a solid play, inviting Carson to take on f6, which he probably won't do. Sorry, inviting Aronian to take on f6. I think he will not take on f6. I think he will play something else. So, 
something along the lines of uh, well black threatens e5 so I'm not too sure I'm not too sure what will happen Wow my feeling is subpar say the least but at least we have some music a nice temperature there is a storm outside I have a radiator it maintains the temperature we have some water some chess no not as many reasons to complain as I had like two hours ago but I was hungry as fuck <laughs> So, yeah, teaching the viewers that complaining is not so good. Such an amazing role model. Teaching them by complaining and then saying that it's not good. Rather than setting a role model, setting an example, being a role model. Yeah. So, e5 is a threat, bishop f6 is interesting but I don't think it's the right way to go for white Aronian played knight b5 and we see it now knight b5 bishop b8 so I guess he wanted after e5 to play bishop takes a7 and otherwise take on d6 and now that the bishop has more squares and there's no knight here maybe e4 can take place because now after e5 I have bishop c5 and it should be okay for white. It's just my gut feeling. So <coughs> he chose he chose to take on f6 instead for some reason. I don't like I don't like taking on f6 in general in this position, but well, if Aronian did it, then there must be a reason. And now he went <laughs> with an additional move. But no, he's still thinking. <coughs> so what's the point of bishop f6? Of course, it weakens the king, but it exchanges a very strong bishop for uh, and, and kind of improves black grip at the center. <sighs> so it makes me feel a bit annoyed that he did it. Feels like he got everything that he could ask for in the opening and now black is very solid all over again. <laughs> I'm annoyed with Aronian's choice and I might consider looking at Ivanchuk versus uh, Koro versus Mamedyarov just for a moment while he's thinking. Well the opening is a good time to move between games. Well, I don't know why I didn't do it before because they think quite a lot in the opening. So, Queen c2 like Ivanchuk did against Carlsen. This time a main line is taking place. e3, Queen e2, yes, this is the critical line, Rook d1, Bishop d2. And they're following one of the most principled options here. And both players seem to be quite well prepared. Ivanchuk is not challenging Mamediarov too badly. And it's very likely that this game will end in a draw as well. Does anyone is anyone here interested in uh, an unbalanced position? Yuyagi also doesn't seem to be too bothered with sharp play. <laughs> so everyone just wants to remain in their comfort zone. Korob of Anand. And then I'll go back to Aronian versus Carlsen. So far so goo. Another boring ver okay, whatever. Let's just stay in the, the main main game. Okay, something happened. He played e4, de. We can expect de. And then the queen will move somewhere interesting. Okay, so so far it feels interesting for both sides. That's the important part. De must be a good choice. And now White will probably is forced to do the same. Queen e7, most probably. I don't know. It's very unbalanced, but I, but very solid at the same time. So I dislike it f f 
for the second reason. Unbalanced clearly because of these pawns and the bishop here. The two bishops versus bishop and knight. But still feels like uh, white is pressing and black doesn't have too many weaknesses. If he managed to get this rook out, of course he will be okay, but this is his main challenge. It will take some time and in the meantime white might be able to double the rooks or build some small initiative. So it's not so clear what white shall do. Because he doesn't have much time and black just wants to go a6, bishop a7 or bishop wherever, e5 get the rook out and uh, offer a draw <laughs> or in Carlson's case play for another 80 moves and fight for the win feeling like this game does not do justice with these two fantastic players probably the most creative player in the world against the most uh, skilled player in the world and all they can offer is this solid position to each other if there was a way to, to get some sparkles from the opening without any engine preparation and have them both using their brain it would be like Waparadze versus Karyakin for example I think both of them will have so much more fun and especially us but there is no pr practical way to force them to do so maybe there should be a way to to grant them incentives but I don't know how or, or what it seems like uh, the organizers or, or Fide or whoever is in charge does no, is not bothered by it uh, too much you just want them to play normal chess even if it's not the most amusing but I mean even for their own sake their chess will improve much faster if they will be busy uh, playing all these unbalanced positions and make a lot of mistakes uh, yeah so Let's hope something interesting will emerge. So what is white going to play? <coughs> Queen a3 of course. Queen takes a3, knight takes a3. Okay. I wouldn't have played queen a3 with white. But uh, okay, maybe that's just me. Well, it's, it's, it's quite logical, because now white wants rook d7, if the bishop comes out like d6 or, b, or c7, I have knight b5 with tempo, and then rook d... sorry, not d6, not bishop e5 or c7, I have knight c4 or b5, respectively, and I'm not worse, but come on. Playing with white against Carson, who wants to beat you very badly, you want to achieve more than being not worse. I haven't looked in the chat in a while. Let's do it. Oh, another daily rupee commercial. Let's call this phone on WhatsApp and get rupees per day per month. sure what to say about this position <laughs> we'll just encourage anyone who wants to see something more interesting than this position in the future to subscribe and watch my future videos <laughs> I knew I'd say that I'd say it somewhere in this stream 
Usually you'll see my own games where sparkles and s sparks and sunshine is unavoidable, pretty much. So rook c8, rook d7 on the board. And uh, we can expect an interesting endgame technique from both players. But okay, let, let's try to be mature for a moment. White is the one pressing. He wants to take on b7 and he will be much better, so black has to respond. He cannot move the pawn because then e5, so he has to go either rook c7 or bishop c7. He chooses bishop c7, which is a pawn sacrifice. Or is it? Knight b5, bishop e5. Ah, because then the knight will block. It's a nice idea. So now if bishop e5, rook b7 protects b2. But bishop c7, knight b5. Now if bishop e5 and I take, now the knight blocks the rooks. Uh, how do you call it? The rooks sight? I don't know. The rook's path to b2, so it's not protected anymore. So after bishop c7, he played b3, just aiming to avoid losing the b2 pawn. Probably aiming also to go rook c1 or rook d1 next. I'm thinking, what should I do after the stream is finished? Okay, sorry about uh, the destruction. Now, rook ab8 was played, preparing the bishop to move. I'm not too happy with the developments in this game. Feels like it will be liquidated into a draw sooner or later. Everything is protected. All that's left is to swap some pieces and shake hands. Okay, come on, I can't wait any longer. I'm sure you guys don't want to. Let's look at this it's interesting game. So, it felt Okay, it's probably equal, but at least quite unbalanced. So this is where we left off, like the position after bishop takes c3. Now bishop on b1, f5. So, at least here we have a lot to think about, and Mamediarov. I don't know if you noticed, but in every single game, Ivanchuk is like, has twice more time than his opponent by move 30. And it's very impressive, at least for me. So, I feel like uh, it's a good idea to, to do it like Ivanchuk does. Play fast in the opening, you know what you're doing, and then use the time later on when it matters. Of course, it all, it's all the, worth nothing if you don't play well in the opening and understand it deeply. But as of now, I don't feel like uh, there is much risk for Ivanchuk. I mean, not more than usual. And Castle and Orunian does not have any major developments. So we'll let it be. 
This is the crucial game of the event currently. If Kassin and Aronian makes a draw, then the one who wins this game will lead by a point. Maybe even a point and a half if it's Mamed Yarov, so... Let's watch it. So now, my nose is getting worse and worse from day to day. Maybe I'll take some of the advice that I receive here. <laughs> Ask the doctor for some prescribed medicine. Lean backwards and so on. To avoid a running nose. But I just can't help it. I don't... I can't breathe. I need to remove it from my body. <laughs> Ivan Shuk is to move, right? He has ten and a half versus four and a half. No? The material is equal, but he has a past deep on. <sighs> this knight and bishop and rook looks active. But they are not attacking anything. Maybe black wants to play bishop e4, I'm not sure. But anyway... Yeah, probably white should play something active. <coughs> I'm thinking something along the lines of... Uh, yeah, but it's not easy. D5 maybe, yeah. Uh, D5 makes sense. So I'll have a quick look at the chat while we're waiting for the Mediarov's response, who is already approaching time pressure slowly but surely well would anyone mind not writing okay i don't mean humans there are some bots that have these commercials but I don't care that much if I have spam or not, but please, why does all the spam have to include the word rupee in it? You might spam with dollars, euros, and every possible other currency, yeah? You can use pounds. Pounds sound uh, juicy. You can use new Israeli shekels. Nice. You can use whatever you want. Even yen. But just... Don't use rupees all the time. It's not creative. It's not attractive because all the other spammers have used it. So they got all your all your uh, potential customers. It's amazing. Is it different bots? Are they all from India? You don't even have to use money. You can offer a job without mentioning money. You can offer you can offer whatever uh, merchandise. The free shipping, pay for the shipping, get a free mouse. I see it everywhere now, these uh, spam messages. So just uh, spam more creative, spam more creatively. I saw a TED talk not so long ago where someone mentions that uh, whenever he gets a spam email, he pretends to be interested and starts responding. Uh, and trolls the, the spammers and he claims he's being moral because he wasted their time so it's their time not being spent on on uh, conning other people and stealing money away from uh, decent adults who might be naive <coughs> okay king g3 on the board Bishop e4. What can I say? The time situation is more or less the same. Position is equally complicated as it always have been. I wonder if if one of them has the advantage. Probably white should take on e4, not to lose the d5 pawn, and then f e d5 is still hanging. Then maybe king f4. 
trying to take e4. <coughs> also knight to b8. And after a5 this pawn will be slightly hanging. Okay, Ivanchuk, that just think. Ivanchuk has time, he can use it to think. He saved this time very effectively. Maybe I'll go to the last board to search for interesting positions. Yeah, but we have to focus. Yesterday I claimed to be hungry and therefore I did not concentrate on the position. But today I have no excuse. I am equally sick and much less hungry. So the only thing that I could do that would make sense to justify... Uh, justify not concentrating he's trying to concentrate so this position even chuk is using up all his time he is a very strong player so probably for a good reason he's thinking he doesn't want to get into trouble but and and he did what i recommended from the start f takes fe and knight b8 he probably calculated much better than i have I just offered the move based on intuition, but now a5, and now there's a choice, either king f4 or knight back to c6, with the idea maybe after a4 to go knight d4. I think knight back to c6 is, a is very uh, interesting, but then actually after knight c6, black might have b4 captures and a4. And now this pawn is coming up the board very quickly, so white has to be extra careful. So maybe not. Maybe I don't want to allow b4, but b4 a4 is a threat anyway. Wow, it's not so clear to me what's gonna happen. <sighs> so if a5, what is white gonna do? Maybe d6, b4 takes a4. Now something like rook d2, aiming for d7 and knight c6. Now there's no time for a3. Okay. So you move the knight. Now I can maybe go rook d5. I don't understand what's going on. Rook d5, a3. Oh, a5, d6 on the board. I have no idea how to evaluate this crazy position I'm analyzing. But this is the position on the board. And now it's very unbalanced. And Ivan Chuk has more time. Four and a half minutes more. Wow. And just to remind you, Mamediarov is leading the tournament by half a point. And the only one who's half a point behind him is Ivanchuk with white. So the winner of this game will be the leader. <coughs> <coughs> so Ivanchuk with white played d6. Rook d1 was played by Mamediarov. Probably a good move stopping the pawn, but... <coughs> How should black react? They should white react. I'm not too sure. What does black even want? B4, A4, as I said? I don't know. I have no update here. Okay, so... After this particular game... We will look at Inner Kiev versus Buk Xiangzi, Ernesto Inner Kiev with white, board number 13. We'll have a look. Hey, there's a rumor that this game is interesting.
Rook D1. Come on. Who is better? Probably we will see soon enough, but I want to offer moves. I was just thinking to offer one move and then they played it. Rook to B3. Attacking the knight, because now B4 and A4 is a threat. Oh, oh my god, what did I do? B4 and A4 is a threat, as you see in earlier. To have a passed pawn, so Rook B3. And now if B4 and A4 I can take the knight, so it's preventing this threat. If the knight moves, I'll have Rook takes B5. So, I don't know what to expect from black. Maybe he has to move the knight somewhere, maybe he has to go Rook D3. It's not clear. But if Rook D3 I can go D7, Knight C6 and Knight E5 check. And white is winning. So Rook D3 is lost. And if Rook C1... This is probably another option. That might be okay for, for black. But Rook C1 does not uh, protect this particular... Does not keep an eye on this pawn. I can go King E4. Attack this guy, landing king e5, king e6. It's very, very dangerous for black. So probably... The third option is knight e2 check. And uh, after king moves wherever... Uh, rook d5, protecting this pawn. But still, it looks very suspicious. All the pieces of both sides are not ideally placed. But it feels like white is the one pressing, because his king is more active. Although black wants knight c1, knight d3, kind of. Maybe rook takes d6 later on. Not immediately though, because rook b5 should be better for white. Maybe a4 first. Or b4 and exchange everything. Anyway, he played rook c1. Rook c1, yeah. Move number 37, it's the same position. And now, what do you think about it? <coughs> a very very intriguing situation to say the least both players want, want to win very very badly king f4 as I suggested b4 takes a4 and now we played rook b2 why rook b2 and not anything else why would you play rook b2 what is this What is this position? Ah, he started with a4. Sorry, sorry. King f4. He started with a4. And now rook b4, there's knight d5 check. So now b4. But is it better for black? He wants a2 and a1. But now rook d2 attacks faster because if a2 d7 wins. So you have to move the knight, so the rook will cover c6. So knight b5 I think is almost forced. Wow, what a position. What can I even say about this position? What is going on? <coughs> I'm so glad I moved from the, from the Aronian Carlton game. Wow. And the Mamedyarov has severe time pressure. He probably has to play knight b5. I don't know why is taking his time the only threat is d7 knight c6 so you must use the rook to protect oh my god he did not play the move and he did okay knight b5 on the board now what knight takes d6 is a huge threat because if rook d6 there's a2 so d7 is practically forced then king d8 will be practically forced, and then both sides don't really have an idea. 
If king takes e4, then a2, followed by knight c3 check. So I cannot take on e4 also, so maybe king e5. So d7 check, king d8, king e5. I'm not sure. <coughs> I'm really not sure what black can do and not w w what white might be threatening. So... Maybe rook c7 followed by knight c3, but we have the king on e5 already, okay. So knight b5. So now he played king e5 instantly, king d8. And now, I don't know. Suddenly the game started from the beginning. King d8, knight a6, interesting. Okay, why not? I like the move king e6 because wait for king c8 and then maybe d7. Okay, rook here. Knight a6 is a bit weird, but now rook b2 is a huge threat. I'm sure he saw something, but if you see something with knight a6, you have to play it instantly. You can't do it and then think. What was knight a6 all about? This looks so much stronger. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Preventing any rook moves because of knight c6. And then king c8, now knight a6, and I have d7 with tempo coming up. I really don't get it. Anyway, knight a6, rook b1 on the board. <laughs> Too late to apologize. So. Uh, d7, rook b2, rook d5. So knight c5 followed by knight a6 or knight b7 is a big threat. We would expect black to play knight a7 and knight c6 to try to avoid getting mated. No, it takes on f2. <coughs> what is the idea? If knight c5 now? What is the idea? I'm not sure. He played rook takes f2 and resigned? I don't understand. I really don't understand, but... Okay, this position looks winning for for white after knight c5, but... Okay, so f this is looking good for white, but why not knight a7? Threading knight c6. Okay, of course the threat is a2, but knight c6 is a nice... Okay, probably b5 should be winning. How about rook takes b5? So what are you gonna do? I have to go something like this. You can give a check. I have. Ah, I can go here. That's the key. Knight b7, knight b6 are both winning. Mate to follow. Okay. So here there's no choice. So maybe there is no defense in this position. I don't know. Maybe rook b2 was a mistake. I'm not sure. Maybe this entire sequence was wrong, bad for black. Yeah, probably it was all bad. Oh, great. Absolutely fantastic uh, play from uh, Ivanchuk. Just fantastic. I absolutely love what he did. And he's the deserved, <laughs> every time I say, the deserved leader of the tournament. But with, if you beat the leader of the tournament in such a fashion and you're half a point behind, you should be the leader. Well, just, he played decent in the opening and uh, kept some of his time for later. And then he used up this time in the critical moment and calculated very, very, very well. And uh, found all these resources that his opponent probably missed. And he just made it look easy once again, so kudos to Ivanchuk for leading the event. Aronian Carlsen was a draw. Let us see how, if anything, any event took place. So this is where we stopped. Rook c1, bishop d8, bishop f3. As I mentioned, liquidation all the way. Let's exchange everything. 
Just a draw. Okay. Not so interesting. Let's move to Inorkia versus Book CXZ. Board 13. Should be much more interesting. Boo already won with black, but let us look at the game. And I will be a little bit distracted. I will input the moves for you. Okay, it's not that many. And in the meantime, I will just uh, look at something else for one moment. So far, it's a very complicated position, as you can see, but uh, quite theoretical, nevertheless. Seems like Book CXZ is prepared. I think I don't do justice with the position showing it like this, so I'll go through it slowly afterwards, or slower. Win H5 and he resigned. Because the knight is lost and the, the attack is overwhelming. So let me start from the beginning. So this position. Yeah, now A5 was a slight waste of time. I want to see the exact move order. This is called the Arkhangelsk. And now here A5, D5. Yeah, knight G3, knight F4, followed by knight takes G2. A very typical sacrifice in this variation and a very nice attack yeah there's rookie four was a lovely lovely move and he doesn't even want to get it back immediately he went for bishop d6 now this queen h5 move and the queen is actually trapped you can't even move the queen anywhere only square is this one and now i take the knight with check and rook f3 will follow and please notice that after queen g4 this pawn is pinned, so you, you can just take the free queen and mate will follow. So, yeah, I'll just wait until the end of the round this time because I'm not that hungry. But uh, the main top boards have finished, so I'll show you the, the leaderboard. So Ivanchuk is leading the tournament alone after the second day with 8 out of 10. Tomorrow is the last day, same time it starts which is 6 hours from now, sorry, ago, but 24 hours later, so how do I say it in proper English? 18 hours from now, yeah, and it's Israel 2 or 14 uh, p.m., it can be referred to as 11 p.m. GMT or maybe 4, something like 4 a.m. PST, if anyone cares to stay up or wake up that early. Um, I will stream the last round and, of course, the last day of uh, the Rapid and the two days of the Blitz Championship that follows. And, um, yeah, right now Ivanchuk is leading and I'm very, very happy for him. He's slowly getting back to the 2800 mark, which he so deserves. And uh, he lost the game to Aronian, but it does not prevent him from having 8 out of 10. How, how incredible is this? Starts with 2 wins, draw a win, a loss, and then suddenly 4.5 out of 5 against all these amazing players. So the next one is Mamedyarov, who just lost. Nipomnishi managed to win against Yu and Gi with black and therefore he joins the leaders not so bad in itself 
<laughs> the next one on the line is Aronian, who made a draw with Carlsen, so Carlsen also has 7 out of 10. But one, point, uh, one full point behind Ivanchuk, so Carlsen, if he wants to win the event, he has to beat Ivanchuk himself. Uh, but he already lost to him, so <laughs> it's probably not gonna happen. So, assuming that Ivanchuk doesn't uh, make less than 50% tomorrow, he will probably cross Carlsen. He's one point ahead of him. So, I think that one of these three will win the event tomorrow. Ivanchuk, Mamediarov or Nipomishi. But uh, we'll see. There are a lot of... Uh, everything is still open with five rounds to go. <laughs> we have a change of leader in every possible round. Not so long ago it was Korobov. Now it's Mamed it was Mam Aronian. Then it was Mamediarov. Now it's Ivanchuk. So every round the leader is losing to someone else. I'm assuming it has something to do with some psychological pressure as well while being the leader so <clears throat> i'll quickly mention that if you like what i'm doing and you want to see some of, more of my videos you can subscribe and watch and, and you'll be forget this word every time you'll be notified <laughs> when i upload new videos and uh yeah receive a notification notified and uh well, we all want to see who's the winner tomorrow, so stay with us, either with me or with the official stream, I, uh, or anywhere, anyone else who streams. Uh, I think it makes the experience nicer. And uh, if you are searching for the official site, you can look on, in my description. And uh, what else? Well. There are a lot of links in my description, if you check, if you scroll down, any link that you press, it, I don't gain anything materialistic, but it does support me, and support is all I ever ask for in return, not uh, as a condition, just as something nice that you can do for me, and in four days I will uh, start a new project, in which I also ask for some support, and... Uh, I'll see how it goes. I'm working on it as we speak, uh, in between streams, of course. And, uh, yeah, not searching for anything in return. I enjoy making these videos, if it wasn't clear for anyone by now. And uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, stream with me, or at least learned something from it. I know I did. And... Uh, if you want to learn some more, then <laughs> keep watching the next videos.